Yale Bowl since 1942. After almost 21 seasons as Yale's head coach, Carm Koza has seen plenty of big games before, and he knows that today's clash with Penn is one of them. Koza's teams have won or shared the Ivy League title nine times. Today, Yale hopes to remain unbeaten in the Ivy League. They're 2-0. With an offense averaging over 370 yards a game, Yale fields its best team since 1981. It's Koza versus Burt, Yale versus Penn. The race for the Ivy Crown begins today on the Ivy League Game of the Week. It's a beautiful day with the Yale Bowl in New Haven, Connecticut. Not a cloud in the sky, temperature in the low 60s. Perfect conditions for a clash between two unbeaten teams in the Ivy League. It's the Bulldogs of Yale, 3-1 overall, hosting the Quakers of Penn with a 4-1 overall record in our Ivy League game of the week. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sean McDonough. We welcome you coast-to-coast -coast on public television. As I mentioned at the outset, this is a big game as we look at the standings. Penn and Yale both unbeaten in Ivy League play. The Quakers 3-0, the Bulldogs are 2-0, Harvard also among the unbeaten, 3-0, and they are hosting Princeton this afternoon. The Tigers still very much in the race at 2-1. Yale leads the series in this long rivalry, which dates back to 1879, 36-15-1, but Penn has won the last three, including the 1983 meeting here at the Yale Bowl. That was Penn's first win here in New Haven since 1962. Here come the Penn Quakers under coach Jerry Burt. The Quakers have won or shared the Ivy title each of the last three years. They have won 11 straight Ivy League games dating back to 1983 and have won 14 straight Division I AA games. That's just four short of the 1 AA record. And the Yale Bulldogs under Carm Koza. Koza 15-4-1 against Penn in his 20 years at Yale, but 1-3 against Jerry Burnt. Yale owns a five-game winning streak in the Ivy League and a seven-game home winning streak here at the Yale Bowl. Now let's go upstairs and meet our game announcers, Marty Glickman and Bob Cassiola. Hello there, everyone. I'm Marty the Hat Glickman, and this is Bob Windblown Cassiola speaking to you atop the rim of the Yale Bowl. And if Penn is to continue the dominance of the Ivy League over the last several years, they're going to have to continue playing the kind of defensive football they've played for the last four years now. And leading that defense is one of the better Ivy League football players, Tom Gilmore. Tom Gilmore is the number one defensive football player in this league. He's a down lineman, a defensive tackle, defensive end type. He's big, he's quick, he penetrates the line of scrimmage versus the run in the pass. He's excellent. He's a big part of their defense, yes. He's the leader of the defense, but they have some fine linebackers, too. Perhaps the strength of their entire defense, which has been tough for the last three years, are the four linebackers, three seniors, Gavin O'Connor, Bob Chismar in the middle, and Denton Walker. Those three seniors, along with Jeff Fortner, the junior, really do a terrific job of backing up against the run and also excellent against the pass. We're going to see a lot of them today. They're very active, very aggressive, and they've been there for three years. Well, to beat that Penn defense, Yale has not one, but two quarterbacks. Mike Curtin, the senior who ranks fourth uh, as an all-time passer here at Yale, is a very versatile athlete. He's six foot, 385 pounds. He knows the offense. He throws the ball well. But they've also got a sophomore we're going to see today, Kelly Ryan, also at 6'3", and they like him a lot. He's a real prospect. Carm Coase is very excited about him. They've just changed their attitude here. They throw the ball as much as run the ball in a very sophisticated passing attack, and both Curtin and Ryan are keys. Well, the QBs, of course, are only half of the passing attack. What about the receivers? They have several receivers, but the one we're going to watch today is another senior, Kevin Moriarty. He's a top receiver in a sense that last year against Princeton and against Cornell, he caught the game-winning touchdown pass with less than one minute to go. Kevin Moriarty, 
The big split end will be the target for Curtin and for Kelly Ryan today. Those are some of the men to look for during the course of the ball game. And in just a moment or two, we'll have the starting lineups for both ball clubs. Here is the starting lineup for the University of Pennsylvania on defense. At defensive tackle from Trucksville, Pennsylvania, number 97, Ken Coombs. At nose guard from La Plata, Maryland, number 65, Dexter Desir. At defensive tackle from Philadelphia, number 79, Tom Gilmore. At outside linebacker from Cleona, Pennsylvania, number 30, Jeff Fortna. At inside linebacker from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, number 54, Bob Chismar. At inside linebacker from Columbus, Georgia, Number 52, Denton Walker. At outside linebacker from Dix Hills, New York, number 20, Gavin O'Connor. At roverback from Chicago, Illinois, number 46, Brad Hines. At cornerback from Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, number 18, Dwayne Hewlett. At cornerback from Chester Springs, Pennsylvania, number 15, Kirk Moyer. At safety, from Rockville, Maryland, number 29, James Fangmeyer. And the head coach of the University of Pennsylvania Quakers, Jerry Burnt. Here is the starting offensive unit for the Yale Bulldogs. At split end from Libertyville, Illinois, number 82, Kevin Moriarty. At left tackle from Shelton, Connecticut, number 75, Chris Martin. At left guard from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number 67, Ken Lund. At center from Canton, Ohio, number 59, Bob Becker. At right guard from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number 54, George Matthews. At right tackle from Stevensville, Michigan, 62, Steve Squara. At tight end from Wilmington, Massachusetts, number 86, Dean Athanasia. At tailback, from Saratoga, California, number 26, Ted McCauley. At fullback, from Emmaus, Pennsylvania, number 31, At quarterback, from Salt Lake City, Utah, number 7, Mike Curtin. At wingback, from Altamonte Springs, Florida, number 18, Mike Stewart. And the head coach of Yale, Carmen Coza. Now back upstairs to Marty Glickman. A substantial crowd on hand here this afternoon. The wind blowing from left to right, from north to south. It won't be an important factor because the stadium itself keeps out much of the wind, although it does swirl to some extent. We'll be back at the Yale Bowl in just a moment. Toss. Yale will be receiving here at the start of the first half of the ballgame. Yale on the near side there in that navy blue uniform, the Yale blue. All in white, pen on the far side with red numerals. The pen colors, of course, are blue and red, and the red particularly stands out. We're looking at Yale right now. At number six directly in front of us is Kelly Ryan, the reserve quarterback. He's a sophomore, and we'll see a good deal of action from him. This will be a big one for both teams. It's the first big game, really, the crucial game in the midpoint of the Ivy League season for both Penn and Yale. Early in the year, everybody predicted that Yale or Penn would win this title. It's, on the, it's all in the cards right now for both teams. It's interesting to note, as you did, Marty, that Penn won the toss, yet they elected to kick off. They want to go on defense. They want to get, hopefully, Yale deep in their own territory, take some early advantage, perhaps, of field position. Kicking off for Pennsylvania. Ray Saunders, one of the finer place kickers in the league. He's attempted nine field goals so far this year and hit on six of those. Number nine raising his hand. Here's the opening kickoff. The boot is high and fairly deep. Coming out of Troy Jenkins at the two. Jenkins running it up. Number 22 drives up field to the 20-yard line, just about the 20-yard line, and he's piled up there. So it'll be first and 10 for Yale on its own 22-yard line is where they place the ball down. Mike Curtin at quarterback. He's number seven. First and 10 at the 22. Yale ball. 
In his backfield, Rick Coe is at fullback, number 31, and Ted McCauley, number 26, is the tailback. That's Curtin. Officials delay the start for a moment or two. Maybe they want to blow up the football. They've got to get something set. Jerry Burnt is asking a question there on the sideline. At the far sideline, now you see Burnt in that grayish sweater talking with referee Ronald Hoover. Yeah. And the officials are Hoover, referee, James Quirk, the umpire. Tom Jurowitz comes into the lineup at wide receiver, replacing Mike Stewart on this first play. Well, we had technical problems. It's Curtin going to pass on third down, and it's complete to McCauley. McCauley pulled down to the 22 on a pretty ankle-high tackle by Brad Heinz on the 46. This is the first first down of the ball game. First series of downs on the opening series. And it's third down coming up now. We had a technical difficulty, as you probably noticed. Sure you did. But nothing much has taken place thus far, except the very pretty tackle by Brad Heinz. We're speaking to you from the Yale Bowl. This is the opening series of plays. There's no score on the ball game. Curtin going back to pass on third and long. And it's almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of Kevin Moriarty. Had his hands on it, and he failed to hold on. Moriarty, number 82, and Curtin comes jogging off the field. That time, Yale came in with three receivers to one side. We had technical problems on the air, as I said. I said we had technical problems, folks. And uh, now Yale goes in a punt formation, failing to score its first first down. Booting from the 10-yard line, the kick is high and fairly short, coming down in midfield. And it bounds around loose, it's recovered by Penn, the penalty marker is down. I don't know why the penalty marker, that ball might have hit one of the players on the field. I think the penalty marker was thrown because the Yale kicking team did not give the Penn receiving receiver a chance to catch the ball. They were too tight to him. I think the technical phrase is... Uh, not allowing him the opportunity for a fair catch. Exactly, and that's the call. You've got to give him at least one yard. You've got to give him a chance to feel the ball or make a fair catch signal, and he didn't have either. So Pennsylvania will get field position right away, and this is the way they took it. They wanted to take, kick the football off, keep EL deep in their territory, and hopefully get field position. They've got it right now. It's first and 10 at the 43-yard line. Penn with the ball on the Yale 43. No score on the football game. Just a couple of minutes gone in this first quarter on this perfect setting. A pitch out wide goes out to the right side. Out it comes to Lorano. Lorano running around like of Camisio. Camisio number 40 driving downfield inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. He picked up 10 yards. Mighty close to a first down. They may be forced to measure on this. No, they indicate first down. That was just a, they came up and shifted into a pro formation, put Camisio into the sideline, and they just ran a quick toss right into Camisio, right back into the sideline, pulling the garden tackle of that side, get a good block in the corner. He waits for his blockers to form. Excellent cut, first down. It's first and 10 at the 33. Slot formation. Camisio again, number 40, drives up to the 30-yard line. Three yards on the play. Camisio, the tailback, is coming off of a hamstring pull that has hampered him most of the early part of the season. Jerry Burt, the coach of Penn Fields, he's ready now. He's starting to come into form. They're starting to feature him already in the first two offensive drives thus far in this game. It's second and seven at the 30-yard line. Flank is wide out to the left side. They are Saunders and Moya. Slot formation left. Quarterback, Korchikia. Hand up, up the middle, driving along the left side is O'Neal. O'Neal, the fullback, drives inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. He picks up 12 yards on the play. It'll be first and 10, down at the 12. Let's go down for Sean McDonough on the field. Marty, you mentioned at the outset that Jerry Byrne had called the official over before the first play of the game. Apparently, the coaches on the sidelines are experiencing some of the same technical difficulties we are with power in the stadium. The coaches' headsets are out, so Yale was also ordered to take their headsets off. I'll let you know when they're back on. 
Now plays resume first and ten at the 17-yard line. Man in motion comes towards the near side. That's Novoselsky. Novoselsky. Uh, handle goes to Camisio. Bust downfield to the five-yard line. Fumble ball. Fumble. Loose ball. Yale recovers. Yale gets a big break on the play. Comizio running it downfield. Check that. That was O'Neill, the fullback, running downfield. And he, as he was hit, let's watch it again. That's, that's the tailback, Comizio. He breaks the line of scrimmage. He gets hit from the side here. The ball is fumbled and in from the outside comes the defender to pick the ball up. Number 28, John Shannon. Excuse me, the free safety, Jarkson. Mike Jarkson made the recovery. Big play for Yale. They were hurting right then. So it's first and ten. Back at the three-yard line for Yale. Slot formation to the left side. Eye formation in the backfield. Mike Curtin at quarterback. Handoff up the middle goes to Rick Coes, the big fullback. No gain on the play. When you get when you get a, a defensive team like Penn in this position, they love it because that means they can come up tight, they can penetrate the line of scrimmage, their linebackers can get very free and aggressive because they've got Yale in deep in their own territory, and that's what they're doing now, forcing second and long situations. It's second and ten at the five-yard line. Flank a wide out to the left side is Kevin Moriarty. Rest of the ball club is tight. Man in motion is Stewart. Back on a counter play to the tailback Jenkins, McCauley. McCauley carries was over the five to about the six-yard line. He took that dig step to the left side and barreled off his own right guard. Stopped on the play by Denton Walker, the inside linebacker, number 52. Denton Walker at 6'2", 217, very quick. Leads this team in tackles thus far with 52. He wasn't going to be fooled. It's pretty tough to run counter plays against a defense, particularly as quick and as strong as Penn with their linebackers, and Denton Walker is the leader of that group. There's no score in the football game. Just two and a half minutes are gone in this first quarter. Third and eight at the seven-yard line. Again, Stewart comes in motion. Curtin the pass. It rolled free. He had it in his hands for just a moment. Moriarty had it just for a moment. And he dropped it as he went down to the ground. Kevin Moriarty, number 82. Moriarty, the key receiver on the right side, coming down, working. He does a little outside fake, gets the cornerback up, does not fool Kirk Moyer, though, but makes a great athletic move coming over the inside, trying to take the ball away from Moyer. Just couldn't hold on. Kirk Moyer made a good defensive play. He was with him all the way. Punt formation now. And there's the boot, and it's a beauty, a high quivering spiral back to the 48-yard line. And it's taken there by Chris Flynn. Flynn is tough. There he goes. Watch out. He's a dazzling runner. Chris Flynn, number 27. Coming into this ball game, Carm Koza mentioned that he was really concerned about the kicking game. He thinks Penn's strength in the kicking game is excellent, and this is the reason. This sophomore from Springfield, Pennsylvania, number 27, Chris Flynn. Look at the moves on him. Great balance as he cuts back. He returned one of those last week for a touchdown down against Davidson. It's first and 10 at the 29. Mike O'Neill, the fullback. He's number five. Rich Camisio is the tailback, number 40. O'Neill carries up the middle, goes for about six yards on the play. Excellent trap call there. There you see the offensive lineup of Penn and that inside Jeff Goyette, the co-captain and left guard, trapping that time, leading the fullback Mike O'Neill up the middle. They've hurt Yale on two series now with the fullback trap inside. Second and five at the 24. Penn keeping the ball in Yale territory. No score on the ball game, however. Eye formation in the backfield. Flank is a right and left, second and five on the 24. Tamizio again. And he drives inside the 20 door at the 17 yard line as he picks up seven yards. And it looks as though it's good enough for the first down. It is a first down. They've got to get their running game going. That's what Jerry Burns said. And they're going right after Yale. And they're running behind their big right tackle, Marty Peterson, number 76. Peterson blocked that time on the corner against Malcolm Frank. The young sophomore who's playing a defensive left tackle for the injured, Pat Maloney, made good yardage first down. Brian Moyer flanks very wide out to the left side. Ken Saunders split to the right side, first and 10 at the 18-yard line. O'Neill carried the fullback on a neat double fake. That time, Kuchikia faked handing off to Camisio, fake keeping the ball himself. And meanwhile, Michael O'Neill, the fullback, ran it down to the 15-yard line. That's called a con trap, a slow trap developing back to the weak side of the formation, and they let O'Neill pick his way. For a minute there, it looked like he didn't have it, but he cut back to get a couple of yards. 
Eight minutes and 50 seconds to go in this first quarter. Penn threatening, second and seven on the Yale 15-yard line. High formation of the backfield. Man in motion is the tight end, Novoselsky. And it goes to Novoselsky along the right side, right down near the goal line in the three-yard line. Eric Rutherford, number 88, carried that ball. It's good for a first down, first and goal to go four yards out. And that's a trick play that they put in for this game, the tight end. The tight end comes across in motion, and as he comes across in motion, the quarterback fakes to the tailback, a quick flip screen out to Rutherford, and the tight end's blocking on the corner, and he cuts it back to the inside, gets excellent yardage. The ball is inside the five-yard line of Yale. First and goal to go, four yards out. Man in motion, big tight end. Pitch out to Camisio. Touchdown! Camisio, number 40, running it in for the score. Rich Camisio out of New Fairfield, Connecticut, just down the line from Yale, a few miles. A finance major out of the Wharton School. Rich Camisio scores the touch. And they've been waiting for Rich Camisio to come back to the kind of season he had last year where he's the Ivy League sophomore of the year. Here is a toss sweep back to the left side as they pitch the ball. A great block on the corner here by 57 Jeff Goyette along with the tight end Scungio. Everybody blocked on the corner. Touchdown. Ray Saunders ready to try the point after. The boot is up and it is. It's good. And so Penn playing the entire first quarter thus far. Seven minutes and 55 seconds of the first quarter played entirely in Yale territory, and Penn scores to go ahead seven to nothing. Pennsylvania's been looking for their offense to arrive. They've been very confident on defense. They've played everybody very tough on defense except for the Army game, and nobody's played Army real tough, quite frankly, this year. But they've been waiting for their offense, and their offense is slow developing. Today, it looks like it's in full gear, particularly with the running of Rich Camisio. And as we pointed out at the outset, Bob, Penn had won the toss, and Penn elected to kick off. That's exactly right, because they've got so much confidence in their defense, and they wanted to get Yale pinned back. They did exactly that, but they took advantage of field position, and they'll do that for a while. These two teams are undefeated in Ivy League play thus far this year. Yale is 2-0. and oh. Penn is 3-0. and oh. And first place is at stake in this competition today in this ballgame. And Karm Koza, the most successful coach in Yale history, knows coming into this game that he had to do something different, particularly in his offense, to get it going. Hopefully he can start with his offense now as they get the ball back. Ready for the kickoff. Ray Saunders booting it. This one is fairly short, coming down inside the, to the six-yard line and running it up is Tony Jenkins again to about the 22. And again, there's very good coverage on the kicking team for Penn. A.J. Sebastianielli made the tackle for Pennsylvania. So it's Yale ball and it's first and 10 for them. Ball at the 22-yard line as Penn leads in the game seven to nothing. Kelly Ryan is in now at quarterback for Yale, replacing Mike Curtin. Ryan, the sophomore we talked about at the outset. 6'3", 190 pounds. His brother Mike plays linebacker on the same ball club. But that's Kelly Ryan, number six, at quarterback. And the pitch out goes to McCauley. Short yardage up to about the 24-yard line, where it'll be second and eight at the 24. Again, Tom Gilmore, the co-captain from North Catholic High School in Philadelphia, on the play. Gilmore, very tough and active defensive lineman. And Tom Gilmore is hurt. Number 79 is being helped off the field. Around about the 23-yard line. The trainer so, has come on to take a look at him. It looks like it might be a hand injury as he's holding his either his left or his right wrist as we see him walking off there. That would be a tremendous loss to this ball club, not only because of his talent, but what he brings to this club as a leader. Tom Gilmore, all Ivy, all American, a math ma major from Philadelphia. Second and eight at the 24-yard line of Yale. Yale trails. They have a triple flanker to the right side, only one running back. Almost intercepted. 
That ball might have been deflected along the line. Brad Heinz, the rover back, was there. It might have been deflected as he passed the line of scrimmage. They came intended for Tom Jurowitz. They came with three receivers to one side, as it was described, and that time they had man coverage, and Heinz just ran across the formation with Jurowitz at excellent position, and the ball was delivered by the quarterback, Ryan, a little bit behind him. Very fortunate there for Yale. That could have been an interception for Penn. And Penn leads by a score of seven to nothing with 7-10 to go in the first quarter. Third and eight at the 24-yard line. Slot formation to the right side. Kelly Ryan at quarterback, number six. There's Ryan. Almost intercepted again. Once again, it was almost taken this time by Denton Walker, the inside linebacker. And and we talked about the ability of these linebackers, the activity they can run, and you see the move here. It's a sprint out by Ryan. There's pressure. People are up in his face. The defensive end comes, but look at the effort by the, the linebacker Walker here as he gets in front of the play and almost comes up with the interception. Well, it's fourth and eight and on the 24. Back at the 12-yard line in punt formation. Jurier. Flynn calls for a fair catch. That's Chris Flynn wisely calling for a fair catch on his own 45-yard line. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, isn't that the, isn't this the first time in the ball game that Penn has been in, in its own territory? That's exactly right. They've had excellent field position, but they'll take the football on the 45. That's still very good field position to start any drive. It'll be interesting to see now. They've been running the tailback and trapping with the fullback. Let's see what they do in this series. Well, it's first and 10 at the 45 of Penn. They lead in the game 7-0. Quarterback is Jim Krochikia. Hand off to Camisio. Beautiful trap play up the middle, and he goes into Yale territory. And to find out about Tom Gilmore, let's go down and hear from Sean. Marty, Tom Gilmore has a very painful injury, although I don't think it's that serious. His left thumbnail was almost completely torn off on that play in which he came out of the game. There was a lot of blood coming out from under the thumbnail, and needless to say, it was very painful. The Penn training staff has put tape around it and a pad over it to try to keep that nail on, and I think we'll be back in the game shortly. We'll keep you updated. Thank you, Sean. Now it's second and two at the Yale 47. Penn with the ball and leading by a score of seven to nothing. Camisio again for short yardage, and he's very close to the first down marker at about the 44-yard line. And they're working behind their offensive line, particularly that time their right guard, number 68, Jim Panzini, the junior, and the other junior, the big lineman, 6'5", 255, Marty Peterson. They're really going after the Yale defense because they know they've had injuries. In there at one position is Malcolm Frank, a sophomore for Yale. Big kid at 6'3", 220, but very inexperienced. So Penn is running right at the heart of the Yale defense. Defense. And as you see, they're shy of the first down by a foot, the full length of the football. So it'll be third and a foot at the 44-yard line. Coming into this football game, both coaches, Carm Koza, Jerry Fern, said we've got to get our running game going. Yale has tried it thus far, but they've had poor field position. Pennsylvania definitely has their running game going with the efforts of their tailback. Of course, back in the game, Rich Camisio and their fullback, Mike O'Neill. Both of them have gotten big chunks of yardage thus far in this ballgame. Now it's third and a foot at the 44-yard line. Mike O'Neill and Rich Camisio are the running backs. Three tight ends are in there. Novoselsky, Scungio, and Miklos. Three tight ends are in. As Scungio with it. Hand up. Camisio has got the first down and more as he's forced out of bounds. He's forced out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. All he needed was a foot, and he got a yard. Mike Tarkson forced him out of bounds. Tarkson number 39. So it's first and 10 for Pennsylvania on the AL 43-yard line. And with the exception of one play in this first quarter, the football game has been played in Yale territory. Six minutes and three seconds to go in this first quarter. Two flankers wide out to the left side. Quarterback Kuchikia looking over the defense. Camisio again. He's a pretty runner, you know. He weaves in and out looking for those blocks and ran it down on the 35-yard line where Carmen Ilaqua, team captain, made the stop. Ilaqua number 40 out of Ohio and a sociology major. Again, they're running off the right side. Again, the big block by the right tackle, Marty Peterson at 6'5", 255. Just an imbalance there in weight and size, and they're making yardage, big yardage. It's second and three at the 35-yard line. 
McGinnis, O'Neill, and Camisio in the backfield. O'Neill carries. Short gain. Mike O'Neill, the fullback, number five. Out of Illinois at Wharton's Finance School. O'Neill is a good back. He's a quick back, and he's really moving, and they're trying to get him inside with the trap play. That time, Yale reacted a lot better inside to the, to the movement of the offensive guard, and they held it to a short game. Now it's third and three at the 35-yard line. Again, the eye on the backfield. Man in motion now. Front, Novoselsky. He's got it at the 25-yard line. A pretty play to Brian Moyer, number eight. Good for the first down, Brian Moyer, out of Sellersville, Pennsylvania. He too is in the Wharton School in marketing. National High School Honor Society, fine students, and a fine catch at the 25. And he's the leading receiver, as we see, with 13 receptions coming into this ball game, averaging over 13 yards per, per catch. Very versatile football player, Brian Moyer. Two wide receivers wide out to the left side. It's first and ten at the 25. Penn leading 7-0. Draw play, Camisio. Back to the weak side, to the 24-yard line. Let's go down to Sean McDonough. Marty, a question for Bob, and that is, it's very obvious down here at field level that Yale was being completely outplayed at the line of scrimmage. Penn offensively and defensively really surging off the ball and controlling the play. My question for Bob is, is there anything Yale can do, particularly now that they're on defense, to stop this momentum in this third in the offensive line of Penn? Well, Yale can, and they will have to get their linebackers up, and they have to blitz on the early running downs. They're not holding up with the defensive down lineman against the run. Second and eight on the 23. Watch out. Jim Crochicchia is pulled down by Dean Yakabuchi, the nose tackle, and Mike Ryan. That time he just waited too long. He was looking to go, to go deep, and as he waited, he got pressure. They kept him in the pocket. Excellent rush by Yale, and eventually Yakabuchi's there, and the big play, the final hit put on by the linebacker, Ryan, number 29. That there brings up a third and 18 situation at the 33-yard line of Yale, and that's the biggest defensive play of the ball game thus far for the Bulldogs. Third and 18, obvious passing situation here. Crochickia dropping back. Draw play. Camisio has it. He picked up good yardage, but not enough for the first down, but maybe enough yardage for a reasonable field goal. And that's exactly what the thinking was there. Let's get the ball up field and close enough. This is a tailback draw play. Camisio looks very quick today. Gets good blocking interior from Bonato as center. Jeff Goyot, number 57, is left guard. Makes enough yardage to put that ball within reason for a field goal try. A 41-yard field goal attempt coming up. The angle is almost non-existent. And ready to try the field goal, Ray Saunders. It's high enough and deep enough, and it is good. It's good. And Penn goes ahead, 10 to nothing. That's the 10th field goal attempt by number nine, Saunders, this year. The young man out of McLean, Virginia, a science major, kicks it. He's now 7 for 10 on the season. And that was a 41-yarder, and he had plenty of room to spare. And the key thus far in this first quarter is Penn has had good field position, and they've gotten scores off of it. And I'm sure running through Carm Pose's mind right now is, we got to get our offense in this game. we got to stay close to these guys. But they can't afford to let Penn take advantage of the field position. Thus far, they've capitalized on it. They've got 10 points already in the first period. And dropping back to receive this next kickoff are Ted McCauley and Troy Jenkins. And Yale has not had the ball outside of its own territory. Only one play in this entire first quarter has been in Penn territory, and Penn had a first down on its own 45. And it'll be interesting to see whether Carm Kozit goes with another quarterback. He's, he's already in two series, in three series, gone from Mike Curtin, the senior, to Kelly Ryan, the sophomore. Let's see who he comes with now, trailing 10 0 still with plenty of time left in this football game and Ray Saunders will do the kicking again Penn we hear has perhaps the finest kicking punting and kicking in the Ivy League and here's Saunders now kick is fairly short no it isn't either the wind takes it down at the two-yard line and is Jenkins running it up 
Good play inside the 20. And Bob, isn't it true that any time a kicking team can stop the offensive team inside the 20 it's, on a kick, it's pretty good? It's excellent. And Jerry Byrne tells us that he spends 20 minutes each day of his practice session, 20 minutes a day, devoted to all phases of the kicking game. And that has paid off for him. They have his final all-around kicking game as any team in the Ivy League. And now Tom Gilmore has come back into the lineup as defensive tackle for Pennsylvania, and that's a big assist. Slot formation on the left side. First and 10 at the 17-yard line. Carrying the ball now is Stewart. Stewart breaking free. Mike Stewart, who plays tailback as well as wingback. Mike Stewart, a 6'1 junior, running it up. And this is just the tailback. He's following his fullback to the weak side of the formation. Gets an excellent block on the corner from his fullback and breaks it outside. And he's the guy most people fear. He's the best all-around back on the field, Mike Stewart. He ran for 16 yards and his first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Penn leading 10-0. Stewart again. He doesn't get 16 on this one. He gets one yard to the 34-yard line. Stopped by Dexter Dezier of La Plata, Maryland. Dexter Dezier, the nose guard. It's six foot, 220 pounds. Very quick. Played off the block of the center, Bob Becker, that time for Yale. And was right up before, right up in the face of Mike Stewart before he had a chance to cut. Mike Curtin has returned to quarterback. So we've seen both quarterbacks early in this ball game for Yale. It's second and eight at the 35-yard line. They put it down near the 35. Man in motion going to the side is Dave White. As Curtin, number seven, bad pass. It slipped out of his hands, and it was a wobbly spiral going well out of bounds, intended for Kevin Moriarty. That's Curtin, number seven, shaking hands with Stewart. And number 31 is the fullback, Rick Coase. That time he was looking for Moriarty, but Moriarty was double covered. He had the linebacker Walker in front of him and Brad Hines, excuse me, Dwayne Hewlett, the cornerback behind him. He had also a defender right up in his face as he delivered the ball, and there was no chance to get the ball to Moriarty. Just 62 seconds remain in this first quarter. Harvard playing today, also undefeated. Back to pass now is Curtin. Throws short over the middle. Complete to Stewart. Look at that move. Down to the 40-yard line of Penn. Mike Stewart makes the grab. There he is, number 18, the junior from Florida. And look at how smooth he is as he comes out of the backfield from the tailback position, circles in the middle. The linebackers are taking a deep drop, but look at that cut. And he just glides here. That's why they think he's such a great athlete. Good moves, and he's playing hurt. On Wednesday, he got hurt last week. Uh, last Saturday, he hurt his thigh, but he's back today. He hasn't practiced since Wednesday, but he looks ready to go. 25 yards on that last play. Curtin again. He hands off to fullback Coase. Coase drives for short yardage, about two, three yards on the play. And that might be the last play of this first quarter. And now 18 seconds remain on the quarter, and the clock is running. They may not get another playoff here in this first period with Pennsylvania leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Three seconds to go in the quarter. And they won't get the playoff. So that's the end of the first period of play, and Penn has dominated until these final last three plays. Penn has dominated, and they lead at the end of the first period of play by a score of 10 to nothing. We're going to take another. We're going to take another look at the ability of Mike Stewart, and actually, he is such a versatile player. Here they put him in the tailback position, number 18. As the quarterback curtain comes back, he looks for him over the middle. They've cleared the area out. The tight end Anathasia has cleared out the linebackers, and there's the cut to the outside. And gets hit, but keeps his balance, keeps his drive, gets upfield, and that play has not only gotten Yale in good field position, but has ignited this offense, and it looked like they've got something going for the first time this afternoon. And in case you joined us, we're at the Yale Bowl. Marty Glickman, Bob Cassiola, Sean McDonough. Pennsylvania leads by a score of 10 to nothing. A 29-yard drive with Camisio going over for the touchdown. A 41-yard field goal by Saunders of Pennsylvania, and they're out in front now by the score of 10 to nothing. But Yale has the ball, and they started this drive on their own 17-yard line and now they've moved it to the Pennsylvania 39 where it is second and nine at the 39 the Ivy League game of the week two undefeated Ivy League teams 
Plot formation on the left side. In motion coming to the near side is White. Rolling out Curtin. Not the side. Pretty defensive play at the last moment. He came across just in time. Dwayne Hewlett, number 18, making the play. Hewlett out of Abington, Massachusetts. A senior, 6'2", 190 pounds. Dwayne Hewlett is the, the leader of the secondary. He was the only one with experience coming back in the secondary this year. He made a beautiful play on a sideline cut by the wide receiver. Timed it perfectly. Kept away from making interference. He got his left hand on the football. He is a fine athlete, and he's playing up to his potential today. Triple flank on the left side. There's only one deep back. Curtin rolling out. In and out of the arms of two men. Intended downfield for Mike Stewart. And Stewart had to go through his hands to Kevin Moriarty's arms. And out of Moriarty's arms, number 82. Stewart being number 18. So now they call for a punt formation with a fourth and nine at the 39-yard line. Tom Gilmore playing once again defensively for Pennsylvania, and he was the man who was rushing Curtin on that last play. Todd Cowan booting the ball, number 42. Fair catch being called. It bounces over to the far side, not a bounce at the 11-yard line. How important is Gilmore to the ball club? Here's what Coach Jerry Burnt had to say about it. Tom is, is, I believe, the premier defensive player in the league. He came into our program, no one else recruited him. No one else really thought he was big enough to play major college football. Play, he played down lineman in, in high school at about 195 pounds. Came in here as a sophomore at 205 pounds. Started for us, and we knew we had a special thing because he is just an intense... I haven't coached a football player, been around a football player any more intense than Tom Gilmore. Any, with any more effort. With with, with, with any more uh, ability to read uh, offensive schemes and, and disrupt offenses. I think uh, that one-on-one, -on -one, that he's unblockable. Ardell McKenna with a fine move inside, number 56 McKenna, through ball carry Camisio for a loss back at about the eight-yard line, a three-yard loss on the play, and now Penn has placed Penn in the situation that Penn had Yale in the first quarter. And that's what they got to do. They've got to be able to penetrate the line of scrimmage and take some chances. They can't sit back against this Penn offense or else they're going to be pushed back up the field. Second and 13 at the eight-yard line. Chris Flynn in a tailback now. Offside against Yale, I think, unless he was drawn off, and Flynn is pulled down for no gain. Penalty Marcus flew all over the place. It's very interesting that they were drawn offside. Coming into this game, Penn decided that they were going to change their cadence because they felt that Yale was a little bit antsy on the line of scrimmage. They moved on sound. So that's probably what happened. Prochikia altered his cadence, pulled him off sides, picked up five yards. Jim Krochikia, a fine junior quarterback at 6'2", 207 pounds. He wears number seven, as Curtin wears number seven for Yale. Out of nearby Southbury, Connecticut, Krochikia now playing for Penn. It's also interesting to note, Marty, that Rich Comizio comes from New Fairfield, Connecticut. So they've got a lot of reason to be up for this game besides just playing Yale. Now it's second and eight at the 14-yard line. Penn leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Penn deep in its own territory. Moya in motion. Hand off to Flynn. Flynn goes for a couple of three yards. Once again, they're running that inside trap to the fullback. They're just trying to use a lot of motion and shifting to disguise things. And then hand the ball off inside to O'Neill. That time, the defense led by Dean Yakabuchi, the nose guard, did not give too much ground. And again, now Penn is faced with a third and medium yardage. Third and six it is at the 16-yard line. A key play in this at this stage of the ball game. Third and six at the 16 of Penn. Good kick here, pitches out. And Camisio stopped at the 16-yard line. No gain, and Yale will take over. And it seems like old Mo has switched. Momentum has gone the other way. It almost was that they knew the play was coming. They were run a toss sweep back to the right side as he pitched the ball. He got tremendous penetration. Ardell McKenna, the senior linebacker, number 56, playing an outstanding game, got through, tripped him up, and now Penn is punting again, and Yale will get the ball with pretty good field position. Dave Fasnack punting that football. He just does get in the way. A penalty marker is down, running into the kicker. This play will be nullified for Yale. 
It's going to be pinball. It's going to be pinball now. Let's hold it now. Be this is a key play right here because from deep in their own territory, the kick of Fastnack was run into, and that ball is going to be brought back, I believe. That's a tough break because the kick was a low kick. It bounced. Mike Stewart, number 18 for Yale, picked it up and returned it all the way back inside the 45-yard line of Penn, but it looks like, and we're going to see the replay on this, as Fastnock takes the ball, as he looks down to, to put it down, he gets a good high drop here, and here comes from the outside, number 95 for Yale comes through, catches him on the legs, and number 55, Yakabuchi, the middle guard, hits him high, and that's the penalty right there. And the officials are still discussing it, but the Yale players are going back to that point of the field. That's a big penalty. What was the call? Running into the kicker. Kicker is totally unprotected in a situation like that in Common Coza. The defense for Yale is back on the field, so they know they've had a penalty. It's going to be a first down. Penn gets a big break. Yale loses good field position. Unless the penalty does not make it a first down. That's probably what's going to happen. It's just shy. It's fourth and one. And uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's going to have to kick the ball again because they're deep in their own territory, and that's what they got to do. they got to get their punting team back on the field. Pennsylvania leads by a score of 10 to nothing. There are 12 minutes and 13 seconds remaining in this first half. You see the short distance for the first down. They may gamble, but it's not likely. Well, it is. There's some. Trochikia, the quarterback, is still on the field here. And the, the officials are running around trying to decide what's happening. They mark the penalty off. They're about a foot short of the first down. There it is. They're going to measure. And that's what's happened. Penn has asked for a measurement on this to see how close it is. And there it is. About fourth and one or fourth and about the length of two footballs. Quick now, folks. How long is a football? Well, it's about a half inch shy of a foot. The length varies, but there's a maximum and minimum, and it's approximately 11 and a half inches. They rushed their kicking team in the last minute, but of course, Yale is prepared. They've got most of the people they want on the field here. And Ted McCauley is back ready to receive the kick from Fastnack. McCauley running after it. He may field it. Now he decides not to. And it goes back to the 39-yard line. Here's Sean McDonough. Marty, I'm here with one of the avid supporters of Yale football and his bodyguard. This is Jennifer, Lisa, and Jenny, but the man of the hour, Handsome Dan, down below me, the mascot of the Bulldogs. This is Handsome Dan 13. This dates back to 1889. There have been 13 Handsome Dams, and life is not easy for Handsome Dan. Handsome Dan 1 is now stuffed and in a glass case in one of the gymnasiums here on campus, and Handsome Dan 2 was kidnapped by Harvard students. They've had a lot of trouble over the years, but this Handsome Dan has been here for 10 years, number 13, and he's doing a great job. Thank you, handsome Sean. And now it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line of Yale. There's a penalty against Yale. There was holding on that punt return, so it pushes the ball back even farther. And they come up. They lost a lot of yardage in it, it, on one, the penalty that occurred on roughing the kicker. And now with the exchange of punts, they begin just outside their 30-yard line. And Yale trails Pennsylvania 10 nothing. 11:53 remains in this first half. It's first and ten at the 34 of Yale. Yale's offense has begun to move in the closing minutes of the first quarter. Here we are early in the second. Curtin at quarterback. Curtin takes it, rolls out to the right. Nice play over to the right side to Tom Jurowitz, and it's just about enough. Oh, not quite for the first down. A yard shy of the first down as Tom Jurowitz makes the play. And that was a little bootleg action by the quarterback. He fakes in here, the tailback. This time, Stewart going back. He comes out with the ball, and Jurowitz releases inside. Number 25, right on the sideline, in front of the defensive back. That time, Dwayne Hewlett gets good yardage, second and short. Second and one it is at the 43-yard line. I formation in the backfield. Hand off to Stewart. Stewart drives for the first down. He's just short of the 45, and the first down marker is at the 44, so he just about made it. 
and that's what they have to do. Yale has to mix up their plays. Penn is too good a defensive football team, particularly in the down linemen and linebackers, to run right at them all the time, particularly on the known situations, first and ten. They've got to throw the ball on the early downs, open up the offense, and get themselves in a second and third and short where they can get a chance at running for first down. And they've got to be careful of that... Uh that linebacking core, O'Connor, Chismar, Walker, and Fortner, they're tough on passes. First and ten at the 45. Curtain number seven. And it's caught. Good for nine yards again. Tom Jurowitz makes another catch. What you do is when you come up in a formation like that, where they have three receivers to one side on a first and ten situation, you force the defense pretty much to play zone coverage because they're not ready to go tight on you right away. Penn was in a zone coverage. Hewlett, number 18, was again playing off of Jerowitz. He just delivered the ball, picked up nine yards. Good, deep, good offense, good thinking by Yale offensively. Second and one at the 46 of Penn. Penn leading 10-0. Here's Curtin. He's wide open. Dave White makes the catch for the first down at the 33-yard line. 21 yards on the play. And that time, Curtin had plenty of time as he dropped back, straight drop back. The receiver will be coming White, number 27 from the right side. He had plenty of protection, and White came over the middle, behind the linebackers, in front of the defensive backs. Big gain and the passing game, which Penn was concerned about because their defensive secondary was untested. The passing game has got Yale moving the football. It's first and 10 at the 33. The drive began at the Yale 34-yard line. Stewart carries, goes for a yard or two to about the 34-yard line, and Tom Gilmore stops the action. It'll be second and nine at the 34. Besides changing the plays, Yale is spreading the defense. They've got flankers, they've got slots, they've got three men. They've got a lot of receivers out there. They're starting to spread the contain and the support people and really opening up the defense and opening up their offense along the way. Yale quarterback Curtin has thrown nine times, completed five for nine for 53 yards. He looks sharp. Stewart again, dropped for a loss. Back to the 32-yard line. Jeff Fortner, the honor student from Cleonia, Pennsylvania, he dropped him for a loss, caught the number 30. Very tough to run counter or delayed action against Penn. They're too quick. Their linebackers react too well. And that time, Fortner was the guy who came up in a hole and caught Stewart before he could break the line of scrimmage. It's third and 11 on the 32. This good Yale drive is key to this next play. Third and long, third and 11. Flank a wide right is Tom Jurowitz. Just a single back. Two flankers to the left side, one on the right side. Curtain being rushed. Is it? It's incomplete. Ruled incomplete. Brad Heinz almost had it. The intended receiver downfield, Kevin Moriarty. Heinz, number 46, almost made the interception. Also, he almost caught it. He's the catcher on the baseball team as well. And also the linebacker Fortner got tremendous depth and got width to get over there. And as we look at it, we see it's Athanasia, the tight end who he's looking for after he gets away number 86 there. But Fortner in front of him and Hines coming from way from the other side of the field from his defensive cornerback position. Great play. Fourth down and nine. Fourth and nine it is. They're going to go for it. Moriarty flank wide left, fourth and long. He failed to make the first down. The catch was made, but the ball goes over to Pennsylvania. Troy Jenkins, number 22, made the grab, but he was not far enough downfield. And they're trying to get Troy Jenkins, number 22, three in the middle, but Jeff Fortner, three great plays in a row. Number 30, the linebacker, comes up in perfect position. He can't make a better tackle. He makes the play, turns the ball back to his offense on the 30-yard line. So Penn continues to lead by a score of 10 to nothing. It's first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Eight minutes and 47 seconds to go on the first half. Hand off that time to Comizio up the middle. He drives to the 31 or 32 yard line. Make it the 31. It'll be second and nine at 31. Rich Comizio, number 40, averaging 5.3 yards per carry. Out of New Fairfield, Connecticut. 
Now it's second and nine at the 31. Ten with the ball and fair field position at their own 31. O'Neill in front of Camisio. Camisio again. Boy, he runs hard, doesn't he? That's a good, solid halfback run. Up to the 43-yard line. That's run the way a halfback should. And, and also, he puts the ball in the left hand, gets his right hand free. This is just a toss sweep to the left side. The fullback blocking here is O'Neill. But look where he carries that ball. Look at his right arm here. He lowers his shoulder, puts that arm out, and just uses it perfectly to get outside and get good yardage. You can't do it any better. That junior running back from New Fairfield, Connecticut. He picked up 12 yards on that last play. Now Chris Flynn comes in to give him a breather. First and 10 at the 43. Flynn is number 27. They may go the other way on this sweep to the right side. No, they come back to the left. Up the middle on a trap. And Flynn carries for three yards. That was... That's the offensive line coach in Yale trying to explain the blocking pattern to his offensive line and having trouble with the linebackers trying to help him out and getting a better block on the linebacker to free up the tailback to run the ball. Second and seven on the 46. Cook Chikia knock, knocked down. Cook Chikia intending deep downfield for Ken Saunders, number 17. And knocking it down was Derek Kay, number 95. And, and here's Saunders coming down, but Cook Chikia, he's forced inside by Prophet, the cornerback, and as he breaks to the outside, Kay's got perfect position on him and forces Krochicki to elevate the ball. Excellent defense by Derek Kay, the junior linebacker from Palo Alto, California. Thus far in the first half, Camisio has carried 13 times for 77 yards. It's second and seven on the 46. There's Flynn. He slices through for a big first down to the 20 to the 39-yard line. Again, they are taking advantage of the size of their offensive line. As you see, a sprint draw action. O'Neill leads up, but look at that hole. They've cut off everybody from the middle guard to the defensive end. And with his speed, Chris Flynn, the sophomore from Springfield, PA, is just too quick to get up in that hole. That's Moriarty taping his ankle. It's first and 10 on the 39. He picked up 17 yards on that run. Kuchikia throwing. Incomplete. Intended for Ken Saunders. And it was knocked aside at the last moment by Steve Penders, number 46. And Kurchikia made used very poor judgment there. He put the ball up for grabs. Saunders was well covered, and he shouldn't have done it. He was lucky to get away. Cornell leading Dartmouth in the first period. Princeton and Harvard scoreless. Harvard also undefeated in Ivy League play. Holy Cross in, on top of Brown early on. And Columbia and Bucknell are scoreless. Second and 10 at the 39 of Yale. Penn leads 10-0. 6.40 to go in this first half. Kochikia screen back to the inside. Comizio with it. Touchdown coming up. Touchdown coming up. Camisio runs it in. A beautifully executed play, and look at that offensive line, and Camisio's been the difference today. He's returning to the form of last year for the first time this year, Rich Camisio. This is a screen play, beautifully executed. He sprints to his right side. Camisio comes underneath, takes the ball, as he catches it, he makes a tremendous cut to the right side. And right there, he's free to go for a touchdown. Point after attempt coming up right now. Ray Saunders to try it. It's good. 17 to nothing. Penn leads Yale. That play was good for 39 yards. The whole drive good for 70 yards. 
the big thus far the big things today has been the pen offense their ability to dominate the line of scrimmage and here we see it again a little half sprint fake the Camisio, then let him slide out to the backside behind his offensive lineman there that's marty peterson number 76 downfield but there's the cut there's the speed Camisio, who suffered from a hamstring pull since preseason looks great today and he's gone and now for Yale to get back in this game, they got to put the ball up in the air. There's no way they're going to run the ball back, trailing 17 nothing. So we can expect to see some passing, and we may see another quarterback. Six minutes and 36 seconds to go in this first half on this perfect afternoon for football. Temperature in the low 60s, not a cloud in the sky here at the Yale Bowl in New Haven. Ready to boot it off, Penn leading 17 to nothing, and Saunders, the kicker, he does all the kicking except the punting, Fastnack does that. The boot is short this time, coming down near the 20-yard line, running up along the left side is Ted McCauley. And here are some more scores coming in from different parts of the East. Let's see them. Florida leading Virginia Tech. Unusual totals, 15 to 10. Indiana over Michigan, 9-7. Michigan unbeaten so far this year. That would be a big upset. Oklahoma State, Kansas. You notice all these scores coming from the east, as I said. Southeast. Midwest. Close to them. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Yale with the ball. Curtin passing. He dropped it. Oh, he didn't hold on. It, Penn is claiming it was a tip ball and they got the interception off of it. But the officials say no, it hit the ground. That was Mike Stewart who bobbled it and then dropped it. It's going to be second and 10. Actually, the pass is intended for the tight end, Athanasia, number 86. He's wide open. Curtin drops the ball on him, but he just doesn't look the ball into his hands. He can't hold on to it. The ball hits the ground and bounces again just before Dwayne Hewlett could pick it up for an interception. I said, Stuart, it was Athanasia. It's second and 10 at the 28-yard line of Yale. Hand off to McCauley. Up to the 31-yard line as he picks up only three. It'll be third and seven at the 31, and as you point out, Bob, these short runs for three or four yards at a stretch are not going to substantially cut down that 17 to nothing lead. Well, they've got to run occasionally, but it's going to be awfully hard to run against this defense. They're just too active. We've got a penalty here against Penn. A late flag was thrown. It might have been a personal foul. Here comes the official to tell us. Face mask. But the Penn defense is just too quick. Up front, Tom Gilmore is dominating the left side. We knew he'd do that anyway. He's so quick. He's not only a heads-up player, but he, he knifes in, he slants, and he's given a lot of trouble to the right guard, George Matthews, number 54 for Yale, and also the right tackle, Steve Squara. Second and two at the 32, I in the backfield. That's Curtin. He's going to keep it. That's a nice run. He uses blockers beautifully to the 50-yard line, 18 yards on the carry by Curtin. Curtin was a fine sprinter in high school, second best in the state at 400 meters. And this was a determined sprint, a little play fake to hold the linebackers inside, but he's going to run the football right from the beginning here. He's going to do it himself, and he gets the first down. At midfield, it's first and 10. Yale ball, they trail 17-0. McCauley carries. Go, Teddy. Counter play for three yards. It's going to be second and seven at the 47 of Pennsylvania. Bob Chismar, the senior linebacker, number 54, just filled the hole. Chismar comes from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, and that's produced some great football players, a couple of them being Tony Dorsett and Mike Ditka. We watch as Yale breaks the huddle. Ball placed down at the 41, making it second and six. Check that at the 46-yard line. McCauley again. Virtually no gain on the play. Scott Newell came in, number 96, to make the tackle, replacing Tom Gilmore again. But again, Yale is faced with a third and long because the Penn defense has created problems for him in the early down situations. They just haven't picked up enough yardage unless they throw the ball with the run, so they're looking at a third and long. 
It's third and six at the 46. Four minutes and 37 seconds remain in this first half. Penn leading. Intercepted. Intercepted. It's Penn ball. Bob Chismar made the interception. Number 54 out of Alec Cripper, Pennsylvania. And Brad Heinz made the play, and it was Kevin Moriarty. The pass was intended for Moriarty. Had it. Here he comes. Play action again as Curtin comes to the right side. He's looking for Moriarty. 82 coming across, being chased by Chismar. As he catches the ball, Hines gives him a hit. The ball bounces up, and Chismar's effort coming across the field makes the interception. Moriarty from another angle here as he breaks to the outside. Gets beyond the cornerback here. Looks back for the football. Frustrating upon occasion, isn't it? Discussion going on at the near sideline. Don't know quite what it is. They're looking at the tight end with the shot of Athanasia. Oh, Athanasia was a hit on the that sideline. That's it. The tight end, the sophomore from Wilmington, Massachusetts, starting as a sophomore. That's Dean Athanasia, number 86. Four minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first half. Penn with the ball, leading 17 to nothing. First and 10 on their 29. Flynn carries. Up to the 32-yard line. That's Chris Flynn, a heralded sophomore. He was the freshman leading Russia a year ago. And last season, with their undefeated team going 6-0, he averaged 7.9 yards per carry. Chris Flynn is an outstanding athlete. He's an outstanding lacrosse player. Great lacrosse player. Played at Episcopal Academy in Springfield, Pennsylvania. Second and seven at the 32, a pro set. Flank is wide right. Again, Flynn carries short yardage up to about the 33, only a one-yard gain. It'll be third and six at the 33-yard line. And the tackle that time was made by Labissier, and he is a, an unusual young man. Number 73, the junior from Flushing, New York, has two bad shoulders. They have to put him in a harness to play, but he's so quick and so determined. He's out here today. He made an excellent play on a counterplay. There he is, Yves Labissier from Flushing, New York, studying to be a doctor. Third and six at the 31. Might be delay of game. I will check it and see. Or oh, illegal procedure in the line. Let's see what the call is. Illegal procedure it is. One of the few mistakes Penn has made offensively today. Jumped off that time. Nelson Thompson, number 75. He is the offensive left tackle, and he jumped off. So it'll be third and 11, back at the 28-yard line. Three minutes and 13 seconds remain in the half. Penn leads by a score of 17 to nothing. Penn with the ball, third and long. They may, may not chance it. That is a pass. With their 17 to nothing lead. And they didn't. O'Neill carries. Short yard, but look, looking to kill the clock. They'll be pleased with that 17 to nothing halftime edge. You called it. They don't want to put the ball up here. They're up by that much of a score. They don't want to give Yale a chance to get good field position. They'd rather run the football, get a punt here, get them deep in their territory, and play aggressive defense, which they've been doing thus far in the first half. Dave Fastnack the punt from his own 20-yard line. McCauley winning on his own 30. Oh, good kick. Good kick. He backs up six yards to the 24. And he's pulled down at the 29. That's fine coverage on the punch. Well, it'll be first and 10 now for Yale. Ball at the 29-yard line. Yale looking to get on the board before the end of the first half. And they have two minutes and 16 seconds remaining to do just that. They trail 17 to nothing. Triple flank to the left side, only one deep back. First and 10 at the 29. That's Kurt, number seven. Good catch. Kevin Moriarty caught it right in the stomach, a bullet. 
thrown low and hard and good enough for the first down. Penn will play back now. They were in a zone coverage. They're going to try and keep everything in front of them. Yale coming with three receivers to one side, trying to shake somebody. Penn staying in the zone, giving lots of room, keeping the receiver in front of him, keeping it to a short gain. They've come with an extra deep, extra linebacker. They're playing with five linebackers now to get better underneath coverage. The play was good for 11 yards and the first down at the Yale 30. Curtin again rolling out. Stolen in midair, taken by Heinz. I think the catch was made by Athanasia. Athanasia. And he pulled it right out of his hands. And that's the second time that Athanasia has been the receiver and has been hit as the ball gets there. And as a sophomore, he's getting some indoctrination today. The aggressive Penn defense. Hines, Hewlett, Fangmeyer coming up tough on those passes. Stole the ball away. And Penn now, with a minute and 42 on the clock, has a chance to get some more points. Athanasia had that ball in his hands, and Hines just plucked it. First and ten at the 35. It's the Yale 35. Kuchikia was hit as he threw that ball, and it just fell harmlessly. Let's take a good look at this replay. Yeah, because the, the tight end, Dean Athanasia, is going to come off of this. The quarterback just sprints to the right. The tight end from the left side of the screen has released in the short area. The ball is right there. There's 86, and here comes Hines. And look at this play. There's a hit put on him by the cornerback, Hewlett, 18, and Hines just takes the ball away from him. Great defense thus far by Pennsylvania all this first half. And that's what you were talking about at the start of the ball game, Bob, that fine Penn defense. They lead 17 to nothing. Krokochia again. A little too high. Intended deep downfield along the right side to Don Wilson, a fine sprinter, number 21, out of Port Chester, New York. They bring Wilson in for the big play. He's got the speed, as you noted. They were trying to get him a little bit deep, but Yale was playing double coverage. They had the free safety, Yarkson, Jarkson, back behind him. Krochikia does not want to lose position here. If he can get the ball upfield a little closer, they could go for three points if they don't have time to get a touchdown. Jim Krochikia comes out of Southbury, as you mentioned. And he is one of the better running quarterbacks in the league. He's number seven under the center now. Jim Krochikia. Incomplete. Just as the ball got to Saunders, he was hit hard by Derek Kay, number 95. And he just jostled the ball free. So it'll be third and ten at the 35. Time remaining, 1.23 to go in this first half. Pennsylvania leading by a score of 17 to nothing. And now with, with a fourth down situation, the ball on the 35-yard line, Penn has elected to punt here instead of to go for three points. They don't want to get a block or a field goal block. They're going to kick the ball. Here it is now by Fastnack. Nicely gone out of bounds at the uh, eight-yard line. Anytime it's inside the 20, I think it's a good punt. He sure is, and particularly when you're looking at, uh, you're down 17 nothing and looking at over 90 yards. They're in excellent position. They'd be happy to go off with this score. They have dominated play, both offensively and defensively, in this first half. Ball is placed down squarely between the hash marks of the seven and eight yard lines. We'll call it the eight. And running out on the field is Mike Curtin, who suddenly brought his ball club to some activity after the pen had so well dominated the first quarter. And they began to move the ball with Curtin, but not to a score. Draw play. Jenkins for short yardage, and the clock is running at the 1-8 mark now. There it is on the left side. From the other standpoint now, Carm Coza and Yale, they, they don't really want to turn this ball over. They know they've got enough of a haul in the second half to make up 17 points. They don't want to really turn the ball over. Maybe they'll play it conservative and say, hey, let's go in at halftime, regroup, try and get going in the second half. Be very doubtful if they try anything real dangerous from this point in the field. McCauley and Jenkins on the running backs. Jenkins in front of McCauley. And McCauley has it. He goes for about four, up to about the 12-yard line. And that could be the last play, and now they stop the clock. Well, Penn's going to call a timeout probably here. That's exactly what they're doing because they figure if they can, they probably have at least another timeout or two left. Therefore, if they can stop the clock again, they may have to force a punt. And 
in forcing a punt at that situation should they block it it could be a score for Penn and they can go for it they have nothing to lose here whether they block it or not to get a penalty so that's what they're thinking if they can keep it on the ground again stop the clock let's go after the punter that's Kurt number seven a moment ago you saw common Coase at the right he's out of the picture for the moment Mike Curtin senior from Salt Lake City Utah pre-med student here at Yale has had an outstanding career both as a passer and a runner came into this game ranked fourth in the on the long line of great quarterbacks at Yale as a passer and he's ranked 12th nationally coming into this game thus far this year he's thrown for four touchdowns it's either going to be Curtin or Kelly Ryan in the second half and those two people have to get this club going in the second half for Yale to get back into this ball game. We might expect another timeout after this third down play, third and six at the 12, 32 seconds to go in the quarter. McCauley carries up to the 15-yard line. Let's see if they call the time. Yes, they do. It's going to be fourth down coming up. Fourth and two at the 16-yard line. And now Yale will be forced to punt. 24 seconds to go in this first half. And Pennsylvania will be looking to block the punt or to effect a run back of some sort. They can think of a run back because they have the ability in Chris Flynn, that sophomore tailback, that versatile athlete who's just tremendous in running back punts. He could be, he could very well return the football. Because of the timeout, the entire Penn team on the field has gone over to the far sideline. Their huddle for this next play is on the far sideline in front of their bench. And they're talking with their specialty coach, who's probably got them together along with Jerry Burton. And they're, they're just diagnosing or diagramming what they're going to do here. The official calls them to come back on this field, and now they're going to come back. And they're definitely in the driver's seat here. The pressure is all on Yale and the Yale punter, who is number 42, Cowan. There's Ted Cowan. Let's see whether it's going to be a 10-man rush. It looks like it. They're all up close to the line of scrimmage. Only one deep back. Here's the punt. He gets it away beautifully. Good kick coming out at the 45. As Flynn, he called for a fair catch. So what they're going to try to do is go for the one big play. Exactly. They know they've got time on their side with 17 seconds. They may very well put it up deep, see what happens. Ball at the 44-yard line of Pennsylvania. Penn leads in the ball game by a score of 17 to nothing. At halftime, we'll bring you up to date how the score got to be that way. Scores of other ball games and talks and commentaries by representatives of the two schools. And I think a rather interesting conversation with Carmen Cosa. Slot formation on the right side. It's first and 10, 17 seconds to go. Kritschikia throwing. And it almost worked. Deep downfield for Brent Novoselsky. He's their tight end out of Skokie, Illinois. Undecided about his major. 6'3", 225 pounds. And Krochikia takes a drop back, puts the ball up as Novoselsky just runs straight up the field trying to split the cornerback and the free safety. The ball was there, but so was the free safety. Jarkson, who came over and played the ball well. Good effort on both parts, offensively and defensively. Second and 10 at the 44. 10 seconds to go in this first half. Can expect another long pass play here. Krochicki again throwing it long. Intercepted. Intercepted Yale ball, and time is about out. One second remains. Mike Tarkson, an honor student from Michigan. Psychobiology is his major. There's talks at number 39. Good speed. He's the free safety, the center fielder, as we describe it. Again, for Chicky, and nothing to lose, just launches this thing. And Jarkson comes away from the middle, just plays the flight of the ball, gets a little assistance there from the right side from number 47. Jay Ruffin makes the interception. Yale gets the ball back with one second, but that'll be the first half. And the story of the first half has been Pennsylvania, both offensively and defensively. At the line of scrimmage, Curtin will probably just keep it himself with one second to go. Let's see what he does. Hands up to the fullback. O'Neill carries. He's out in the clear. And the first half comes to an end. Dave Klein, in for his first play of the ball game, carried it to the 
25. He carried it well, but the first half comes to an end with Pennsylvania out in front by a score of 17 to nothing. As you see, Penn leads Yale 17 to nothing. Getting ready for the start of the second half of play. Yale already on the field at the near side. Penn has not yet made its reappearance. <laughs> Is that a bulldog? Here are some scores of other games. Cornell leading Dartmouth 10 nothing in the second quarter. Harvard over Princeton, tough ball game. Harvard undefeated in Ivy League play, 6-3. Brown upsetting Holy Cross. You can label that one upset if it winds up that way. No score yet in the second quarter. Columbia playing people tougher. They played Yale a very tough ball game last week, and they're playing Bucknell in the first half, a tough game. Michigan and Indiana, 15 all. Arkansas leading Houston substantially, 31 to 10. Georgia over Kentucky, 19 nothing. Notre Dame, that could be a big upset of the year over Southern Cal, and Pitt may be tied at seven. And uh, Penn is getting ready to come out on the field, too. So we'll be back at the Yale Bowl in just a moment. The Ivy League football game of the week is made possible by grants from GTE, honoring the achievements of scholar-athletes as official sponsors of the GTE Academic All-American Team by Payne Weber, the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. By American Express Travel Related Services Company, cards, travelers checks, and vacation stores. American Express, don't leave home without us. And by Chrysler Plymouth, where making made in America means something again. In women's soccer earlier today, Princeton defeated Harvard three to nothing, and Brown shut out Dartmouth two to nothing. In field hockey, Princeton beat Harvard two to one, and Dartmouth beat Brown three to one. And in men's soccer, Harvard five, Princeton nothing. Yale and Penn played to a scoreless tie, and in freshman football, Cornell 47, Dartmouth nothing. Perhaps a portent of things to come. As you see here at the Yale Bowl. Ready to do the booting for Yale. John Duryea, a junior out of Florida and honor student. Syracuse well ahead of Temple, 26 to 6. Two receivers back there for Pennsylvania. Chris Flynn and Eric Rutherford. And ready for the booting, Duryea. Oh. Flynn has it at the 10. Up to the 17 yard line. Good coverage by Yale. Yale looks fired up here at the start of the second half. Well, they have to get fired up and they've got to start taking some chances on defense. The defense has got to get the football for the offense and some field position. So we may see a change in character by him. They may come after Penn. They have him in a perfect situation deep in their own territory. At the 16 yard line, first and 10 at the 16, Penn with the ball. In their backfield, Jim Crochickia at quarterback, Rich Camisio, the running halfback, Mike O'Neill, the fullback. And the man in motion is Brian Moyer, number eight. Camisio. Eighteen yards, 17, 18 yards on the play. Tackle made by Pucci, number 17. Make that Quinn, number 16. And if you want to look at a difference in this ball game today and this ball club, particularly Penn's offense, it's that guy, number 40, Rich Camisio, and his running ability. He just broke that thing to the outside, slipped two tackles, and got a first down. He's got 95 yards thus far in the ball game, and he picked up 16 yards on the last play. It's first and 10 at the 32 of Penn. Camisio again. Almost away for the distance. He picked up 14 yards more. That time, Penn put their formation to the field and ran Camisio back into the sideline to the left side. The field is towards the screen. He breaks back to the left side, breaks over his left guard. Captain Jeff Goyette and Nelson Thompson breaks the line of scrimmage. And look at this cut here. As he breaks in, he gets the block by Goyette and Thompson. And he's upfield. He's in the secondary. He's forcing the secondary to make tackles. First and 10 at the 47 on two Camisio runs. O'Neill with it. Up the middle he goes, and he picks up short yardage on it. 
maybe four or five yards on the play across the midfield line of the 48 of Yale. So it's put second and five at the 48-yard line of Yale. And there's no question, there is Comizio already early in the third period with over 100 yards on 15 rushes. And that doesn't include his running with the ball after he catches those passes. Second and five at the 48-yard line. Slot formation of the right side. Comizio and O'Neill are the running backs. Back to O'Neill. No gain at the line of scrimmage. Big play by the linebacker, Ardell McKenna. You know, we talk about Comizio, but those men up front give him the opportunity. Steve Bonato at center, Jeff Goyette and Jim Panzini, the guards. Nelson Thompson, Marty Peason of the tack. All the tackles. And those are the guys who open the holes. They do the job up front, the inside five. Well, it's third and five at the 48-yard line of Yale. Penn with the ball. They lead 17 to nothing. Opening minutes of the second half. Boya in motion. Camisio fumbled it. Camisio fumbled it. Watch the official. It looks like Yale. It is. Yale ball. That's the break they were looking for. Mike Johnson fell on it. Now it's a question of whether Kerchikia ever got him the football as he reaches back. He got him the ball. He got it to him a little bit high. Camisio might have been looking to where he was running before he took the ball, fumbled the ball forward, and what looked like a real sustained drive turns into a turnover, and Yale's got the ball in very good field position. As you see, he's looking upfield. He never slipped the ball into him enough. The ball's on the ground. Yale recovers. Good field position with an opportunity to get back in this ball game early in the third period. That's the Penn defensive unit coming out on the field now. Tom Gilmore leading them out. Number 79, Gilmore. All Ivy, all American nominee out of Philadelphia. A math major, number 79. There he is. He's 6'2 and 235 pounds. Not too big as far as defensive linemen go, but very, very aggressive. And very quick. He can put pressure on the passer. He'll run around blocks. And if you run right at him, he's strong enough to nullify your block and get in on the play. In talking with him, as we have, this is the second ball game we've done at Penn this Ivy League season. He has one of the most baby-faced faces I've seen. So you put a helmet on him and look out, <laughs> and he's ready to go. Over on the Penn side, let's see what's going on. What did you do? Know what did yeah. 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 Well, it's first and ten at the 47. As plays about to be resumed, Yale with the ball and trailing 17 to nothing. Here comes Curtin, number seven. Yeah. Completing the field to Ath Athanasia. It's good for the first down to the 39-yard line of Pennsylvania. Often what happens after a turnover, you come back with a play, and what it is is a play action, bootleg action. He comes out, he gets outside of number 30, Fortner, the linebacker who was supposed to contain him. When he had that much time, he had time to find Athanasia with the pass. Ball placed down at the 35, first and ten at the 35-yard line. Curtin straight back. Tula. He kind of had a notion that time as he raised his hand to bring it down again, but he completed the pass and was thrown much too low. He so was it'll be second and ten at the 35-yard line. He was looking for his his back was circling out of the backfield Jerowitz underneath the linebackers but he looked at him all the way and he gave it away a little bit he's got to disguise it a little better because Penn's linebackers have the speed to run with those backs underneath and Moriarty flanks very wide out to the right side slot formation right eye formation in the backfield and time is called something wrong with that last play and Curtin comes to, over to talk to Carmen Cosa and the rest of the staff very crucial timeout to be called so early in the third period Next week in the Ivy League football schedule, Harvard will be at Brown, Columbia is at Colgate, and Cornell at Bucknell, Yale at Dartmouth, and what be, could be the big game, Princeton at Penn. Princeton playing Harvard up at Harvard today. Very close game, 6-3. Harvard leads in the second period. Princeton uh, could be a factor as this league develops because they're starting to score points with their offense, utilizing Doug Butler, their quarterback. As we look here, on the sideline, Mike Curtin is uh, 
talking with his head coach, uh, Carm Coza, and also Seb Laspina, who really calls most of the shots offensively. They want to get something here. It's important for them to get a score of some type early in this third period to get back in this ball game. They don't want any mistakes. He came up over the ball. He didn't like what he saw on defense. He called a timeout. Now players resume this second and ten on the pen, 35-yard line. Yale with the ball. I formation of the backfield. Coes in front of McCauley. That's Curtin. Screen out to the right, but there was no screen available. Almost intercepted. The pen linebacker there saw that screen coming, and he covered the screen man, Coes, beautifully. There's a flag down. It's going to go against Pencil, uh, go against Yale. I think their tackle, Chris Martin, going out to get into the screen, got downfield, and they're going to call it against him. Number 75, Chris Martin is the tackle. I think that's the man they're going to get him. And they may even elect to refuse that penalty. It'll be third and 10 at the 35. Let's see what they do. Well, they're going to be able to loss it down, too. No foul now. Putting it back in his pocket. No foul. The throw was the, the flag was thrown in the vicinity of number 75. Yale was looking to screen back. Penn so quick reacted to it. Had the screen man, the fullback covered that time. Coes. Now they're looking at a third and long. Third and ten it is at the 35. Yale trailing in the game 17 to nothing. Two and a half minutes are gone in this second half. Moriarty flanked wide out to the right side. White is in the slot to the right side. Too high. Watch out. Penalty marker. The ball was caught by Moriarty. And it's ruled incomplete. They ruled he trapped it. And a penalty marker was thrown down as well. Okay, this is going to be very interesting. He didn't catch the ball. The official was right there. The question is, was he interfered with? And that's what they're talking about right now. And it looks like the penalty is going to go against y Yale. And Gilmore is signaling to the sideline to his coach, let's refuse it. But Good idea because it brings up fourth down. What activity in the secondary and with the linebackers of Pennsylvania? And as you see it, it's a drop back action. The quarterback curtain sets up back here. They have crossing receivers. He's looking right in the middle at Dave White, the wing back as he comes over. But look at the effort on the part of O'Connor, the outside linebacker who can vault, gets up in his face, forces a tip. And now we've got a penalty, which tacks on even more yardage, third and a lot of yardage. Yeah, they're going to move that. Excuse me, it's going to be a four count. Punt formation now for Yale. And ready the punt is fast neck. Dwayne Hewlett, deep back, ready to kick it and does. Way back. A call for the fair catch at about the 18, 19 yard line. Great confidence in the Penn defense. They took the, they had to come in that time after a turnover. Yale had good field position, but they just played them aggressively. And you get the feeling that the Penn defense thinks they can stop Yale, whatever they try right now. They're playing with a lot of confidence. It's first and 10 at the 19-yard line of Pennsylvania. They lead in this game 17 to nothing. 12.24 to go in this third period. I formation in the backfield. O'Neal in front of Camisio. Camisio has it. Five yards more, six yards on the play. It'll be second and four at the 25-yard line, as Camisio is well over 100 yards now. The tackle made that time by the captain of Yale, Carmen Alacqua. We haven't called his name out much today. They've nullified him a little bit. We've called more Ardell McKenna, number 56, the other linebacker. Alacqua is the leading tackler on this team. He's a leader besides that. Looked upon by Carmcoz as one of the finest they've had here in recent years. It's second and four at the 25-yard line. Penn with the ball. Man in motion coming over to the near side is Rutherford. Check that. It's Rosania. Rosania was in motion. Camisio again. He's got six yards more. Good enough for a first down up to the 32-yard line. And they're taking advantage of a young sophomore, Malcolm Frank, number 93, the defensive tackle, as they run off tackle and put Marty Peterson behind him with Camisio carrying the ball off tackle. Malcolm Frank is playing for Pat Maloney, who is injured. 
six foot three, 240 pound tackle was injured. They had to come with a sophomore. Part of the success of the running game is they're running against younger players in the defensive line. Rich Camisio, rookie of the year last year in the Ivy League, and certainly ball player of the day today thus far in the ball game. O'Neill carries. The big fullback goes for five yards, four yards, up to the 36 yard line. It'll be second and six at the 36. Very interesting play. They fake the toss to Camisio going to the right side, and they run a little trap play with the fullback coming back, hoping the linebackers will get out of there, and they pick up four yards. And O'Neill, who wears number five, is a Husky 5'10 of 195 pounds. He's a senior out of Illinois, goes to the Wharton School, majoring in finance. It's second and six at 36. Camisio again. The turf tripped him up that time. He really slips tackles, doesn't he? He does that. He's so quick, and he's got great balance, and he's running with confidence, and he's running up behind some very fine blocking of right guard Jim Panzini. This is G. He hands the ball off to him. Look at the balance here. He's covering that ball a little better. Just gets tripped up by the turf, as you said, or it's going to be a bigger gain. But another first down, and Penn is now controlling the football and using the clock. First and 10 on its own 44-yard line. Penn leading in the game, 17 to nothing. Double wing formation. Camisio again. Check that. That was Mike O'Neill, number five. O'Neill was the deep back. Camisio was on the flank that time. They just put him out on the flank to give him a little rest, and they keep the single back, the full back there. But what confidence Penn is playing with today. They were very keyed up coming into this ball game. They felt, even though they had won or shared the Ivy League title, and there's Jerry Burnt, the leader of this crew, over the last three years, they weren't getting enough credit this year. And Jerry's just carrying this ball club today. They came in with a lot of enthusiasm. They knew if they could beat Yale, they would let people realize there's still the power to be reckoned with in this league. Look at this, Crochikia. What a great play by Jim Crochikia. A great play, yes, Marty, but a lot of missed tackles by Yale along the way. Crochikia made a great effort to get the ball back up feeling at a first down. Give him credit for that. He's dropping back here. He slips as they try to hand the ball to the tailback. Camisio went down, which tripped him up. But he made a great move. But there's a lot of hand tackling and grabbing going on there by the Yale defense, which tells you they've been on the field a lot and perhaps they're tired. But a great effort by Krachikia. He's smart enough to say, hey, I'm not going to take a hit now. I'm going to get out of bounds. And he runs it for the first down. First and 10 on the 43. Picked up eight, eight yards on the play. Clock is stopped for some reason or other by the officials. We check them. The chains weren't properly aligned. They were not properly aligned, and now they are set. It's first and 10 at the 43-yard line. High formation of the backfield, flank it to the right side. Man going in motion to the right side is Rosania. Now he stops. Camisio. He picks up three yards. Sean McDonough, what have you got? Marty, a moment ago, I was listening in on the meeting behind the Yale bench. Offensive line coach Bob Estock talking to his troops, and Yale was had a lot of trouble with their offensive linemen. They're being fooled by the shifting at the line of scrimmage by Penn, defensive line. So I think what Yale is going to do, based on the conversation, is go with quicker counts, not give Penn time to shift, and go with more draw plays on the later down, third down in particular, to slow down the fearsome pass rush from Penn. And now Penn has the ball, second and seven on the Yale 40. Flynn carrying it. Flynn giving Camisio a breather, and I think he's made the first down. He picked up seven, and he needed seven. And he's made the first down, and Yale is a pe penalty flag down. I think they're going to get the Yale defensive line for jumping offside, but they'll go with the, with the call because they've got a first down out of it. If they do have the first down, they may want to measure on this one. It's very close. Good deal of conversation taking place there on the field. Pennsylvania leading 17 to nothing. The off sticks are being called for. They'll be brought out. Eight minutes and 38 seconds to go in this third quarter. And you look at the running of Rich Camisio and then the ability of Jerry Burnt to bring in a tailback, a quality of Chris Flynn. In the last two years, 
Pennsylvania probably has come along with the two outstanding young running backs in this lead. Rich Camisio last year as a sophomore, Chris Flynn this year. And what a beauty it is for a coach to be able to substitute those two freely, as he did there, and Flynn picked up the first down on the run. And now Penn has moved the ball from its own 19-yard line to the Yale 33. Another typical Penn drive, and much of it is along the ground. Definitely along the ground. As we realize the deep, the offensive line of Penn is unbelievably dominating the line of scrimmage. They have really put it to this Yale defense, but we've got to mention that Yale's playing with a lot of young players and some hurt and injured players today. First and ten on the 33. Flynn carries. He's tough. He may have another first down. He's close to it. It's awfully tough on you defensively when they can run both right and left with such freedom. Look at the body angle of the running back Flynn here. It's a little counter play. He waits for his tackle Peterson to get up in front of him, but he cuts low to the line of scrimmage, gets good yardage, and another first down. No, not quite. Second and one on the 44. Okay, just short of it. Just short of the first down. He picked up nine yards on the last play, making it second and one on the 24-yard line. This is a brilliant drive by Pennsylvania. Here's Flynn again. He's got the first down of the 21. Again, we haven't heard much of the linebackers, particularly Captain Carmen Alacqua today, because he's being handled. They're not only controlling the down linemen, but they're getting up on the linebackers, and the linebackers are the heart of the Yale defense. They make most of the tackles. They're very active, Alacqua and McKenna. Those two guys have really been nullified today because the offensive line has been able to get on them and block them and give their backs a chance to run for Pennsylvania. High formation again. Flynn is the deep back. O'Neill is the up back. Offside. That's Nelson gonna... Thompson. That's exactly it. You called it. Nelson Thompson, the offensive left tackle, made the move. We're speaking to you from the Yale Bowl in New Haven, Connecticut. And I'm Marty Gleckner with Bob Cassiola and Sean McDonough. In the middle of this third quarter, Penn in the white uniform leads Yale in the Yale blue by a score of 17 to nothing. And this, the Ivy League game of the week. Natalie Marker was down, apparently, against Penn. And the marking is for five yards. Illegal procedure, Mr. Thompson being the culprit. It's first and 15 at the 26-yard line. Now the wide receivers are Eric Rutherford, number 88, and Brian Moyer, number 8. First and 15. Prochikia throwing long. He was wide open, Scott Scungio, number 81, but the pass was overthrown by about a yard. Scungio, a 6'3", 212-pound tight end, number 81, out of Abingdon, Maryland, an English major, just couldn't get underneath that ball. Good call by the Penn bench. That was a bootleg pass. Scungio was there, a little flat on the pass by Kuchiki. If he had put the ball up and dropped it in, Scungio might have had a better chance. Second and 15 at the 26. Flynn carries for substantial eight yards on the play. Flynn carrying right down to the 16-yard line. The Ivy League player of the week, Flynn against Brown. Ran back a key punt last week against Davidson, but great balance. Chris Flynn, great balance, shows his ability when he runs the football. There's, a, there's some scores coming in at halftime. Harvard leads Princeton 16th, close ball game in Cambridge. Third and five at the 16-yard line. Third down and five. Fifth play. Prochikia throwing. Incomplete. In and out of the arms of two men. Novoselsky, the first man to touch it, and Eric Rutherford, the second Penn Quaker to touch it. Again, the bootleg action of the quarterback. He had him so faked out, it was incredible. He could have run with the football, but they don't want him to run with the football. He elected to throw it. He was a little bit behind Novoselsky. They don't get the touchdown, but they got a chance to get more points. Field goal attempt coming up with Ray Saunders, who's kicked seven for ten field goals thus far this year. He'll kick it from 33 yards out. The angle to the right. It looks good. It is good. A 33-yard field goal. And earlier in the ball game, he had kicked one for 41 yards. And the score is now 20 to nothing, Pennsylvania. 
and Yale is looking at at least three touchdowns to win this ball game. They've got to get it going soon, and I think a big question will be here. We know they're going to throw the ball. Will they do it with Mike Curtin, the senior quarterback, or will they make another change and come back to their sophomore, Kelly Ryan? Camisio scoring two touchdowns. Saunders scoring two field goals and two points after. And those two have totaled the 21, the 20 points totaled by Pennsylvania thus far. Of course, they've had a little help from about 40 other players. They've had a little help from their defense, a lot of help. Their defense has just dominated the line of scrimmage, played well against the pass, really has done a tremendous job against Yale's offense. A Yale offense that is regarded as probably probably the most wide open offense they've had in recent years because of their ability to throw the ball. But Penn's defense has not permitted them to really get going or get on track today. But they better get going soon. Number, number nine, Ray Saunders will kick it again. Six feet tall, 225 pounds out of McLean, Virginia. It comes down to the eight yard line. Troy Jenkins running it up to the 25. And the quarterback will be a change. They're coming with Kelly Ryan, number six. They're talking to him. Coach Sepulis Spina on the sidelines is sending Ryan in, trying to get something going for the Yale offense. Kelly Ryan, a sophomore, 6'3", 190 pounds. Where's number six? Let's see what he does. Incomplete. He threw the pass well enough for a completion, and the receiver just didn't hold on. That receiver again was Dean Athanasia, the tight end coming across from the backside. He got the ball, but the linebacker just came on him. They're in the driver's seat now. They're playing and keeping that receiver in front of them. When the ball is thrown, they're coming to meet him. Kelly Ryan made the play. Athanasia just didn't come up with a catch. And Kevin O'Connor was that linebacker who separated him from the football. It's second and 10 at the 25. Eye formation in the backfield. Throw set, blanket on the left side. Split right in. Good for nine yards. Short of the first down by about a yard. Pass play caught by Kevin Moriarty, the honest student, economics major out of Illinois. And what he does here is he takes a shorter drop. He sets up after five steps, and he really delivers the ball quickly. Therefore, with a defensive back, that particular case slipping to fall down, Eulett. But by delivering the ball quickly, he gives his receiver Moriarty a better chance to come back and catch the ball. Excellent run pattern by Moriarty. It'll be third and a foot. Stewart carries. He's got the first down. He's up to the 36-yard line, so it's first and 10 for Yale on their own 36. But Penn leads the ball game by a score of 20 to nothing. In the third quarter, look at that differential. A ratio of three to one. What Yale has to do is they have to complete the short control passes, get enough yardage so they don't come up with second and third and long, and keep the drives alive and throw the ball quicker, get their receivers open, let Penn lay back a little bit in their zone coverage. Only one deep back. Ryan completes it. Athanasia grabs the ball this time. And the honest student out of Wilmington, Massachusetts, holds on for a gain of about five yards. Those are Penn graduates back for the ball game. 1954, do we see? Well, so it is. It's second and six at the 40-yard line of Yale. The eye formation in the backfield has Jenkins in front of Stewart. As Kelly Ryan running, keeping it, first down. He ran for the first down. 
good move, good, good job by Ryan, good thinking. That was, it looked to me that that was going to be a bootleg run all the way. Strong fake to his tailback. He not only got the first down, he got out of bounds and stopped the clock because the clock is important to him here. Kelly Ryan, the sophomore from Springfield, Illinois. Good fake here to Stewart. He comes on the corner. He's going to get a block from Jenkins. He'll put the ball up to keep those linebackers, defensive backs back, and then sneaks out of bounds for the first down. Kelly Ryan has moved the ball club from his own 25 to his own 47. A couple of first downs along the way. It's first and 10 on his 47. Single deep back is Jenkins. There's Kelly Ryan, penalty marker. And Stewart catches that ball deep in Panton territory. But a penalty marker was down. It looks like it's against Yale. It's going against Yale. Holding it is against Yale. Isn't that tough, Bob? Tough play because this is the best executed pass of the afternoon. He takes a drop back action. Stewart comes out of the slot position, swings down the sideline, gets behind the cornerback, and the ball is laid up beautifully. A missed tackle there by Dwayne Hewlett, the cornerback, permits him to get a few extra yards. But it's all for naught because they got a holding penalty, and Yale's going to have to start all over again deep in their territory. It's back to the 37-yard line, a 10-yard penalty. Makes it first and 20 on the 37 of Yale. Yale trailing the ball game 20 to nothing. Four minutes and six seconds to go on this third quarter in this Ivy League game of the week. Again, the deep back is Troy Jenkins. Mike is a left and right. Watch out. He got rid of it in time, but it was dropped by Ted McCauley. McCauley should have handled that ball. It was a little bit behind him, but he could have caught that ball. But it shows one thing about Kelly Ryan. He does have a quick release. He really had backside pressure, but he got that ball off very quickly. It's a tough position for a sophomore to come in under these circumstances, but they have a lot of confidence in this player. They really find feel Kelly Ryan is a top quarterback prospect, not only for their club, but for anybody. They think he's a real prize, and they've got a lot of hopes and expectations for him down the road. His brother, Mike, incidentally, is a linebacker for the ball club, a defensive back, Mike Ryan is. As Kelly Ryan smothered, he tried to throw the ball. He may have been in the grass. They rule an incomplete pass. In the pros, it would have been called in the grass, and I think it may still be. Yes, it is, in the grass. And the big play was number 97, the defensive tackle, Ken Coons, an excellent pass rusher who beats the block and gets in from the backside, along with Bob Chismar, who's played outstandingly at linebacker all afternoon for Penn. But here's a quick drop, just straight drop back. There comes Chismar from the backside, and on the other side, you see Coombs. Coombs, a senior at 6'3", 220, from Trucksville, Pennsylvania. Senior defensive lineman. Now it's third and 20 at the 37-yard line. Slot formation on the near side. Kelly Ryan looking to pass. He's got it. Kevin Moriarty grabs it for a big, big first down to the 33-yard line. The biggest first down thus far in the game for Yale. Again, Ryan shows the ability to sprint out, turn, and deliver the ball with some velocity and distance. And the ball is thrown. The defenders for Penn get turned around and too far upfield. And an excellent job by Moriarty, the senior, as he comes down to find the football. We're looking at Stewart there coming on the inside, but he comes back. Look at that jump. Big play, big catch. He picked up 39 yards on the play in his first attempt at the 34 of Penn. Watch out. He's still on his feet. And he's still through the football penalty marker. Let's see what the call is going to be. It might be deliberately grounding. Yes, deliberately grounding. That's it. That's and it. lost it down. Deliberately grounding the football. There he was as he dropped back in his face. He had two on rushing linemen. Now he's... <laughs> Somebody, the official must have come up and told him that there was a receiver in the area. Now now that, break, that, that break picks up about... It picks up something like 25 yards. Had they left it back there where the penalty flag was, there would have been a 25-yard difference. And Jerry Byrne is really disturbed about that call. He is questioning the official up on the sideline there. Big break for Yale. Again, Kelly Ryan trying to ignite this offense and keep it alive with his play at quarterback, a sophomore from Illinois. 
Second and ten at the 34-yard line. Jenkins the deep back. Kelly Ryan rolling out to the right. And it's complete to McCauley. McCauley picks up substantial yards right near the first down marker. No, short of the first down by five yards. He's short of the first down, but he got out of bounds. And he got out of bounds and stopped the clock and gave it a chance. But it's a sprint out when they're trying to get him away from the pocket pass because he's getting too much pressure. So they're sprinting him on the corner. He's got enough time here to deliver the football. McCauley coming from the slot position. The tailback moved up in the slot wide open. Slips a little bit there. He gets enough yardage to keep the drive alive and stop the clock. It's third and five at the 29 of Penn. Third and five. They may go for a four down series nevertheless. He completes it. A beauty, Tom Jurowitz. Number 25, Jurowitz, completes the pass. That was an excellent pass by the quarterback, Brian. He was well covered by Brad Hines, the senior rover back, but he found White on the sideline. Watch this execution. Little fake for the tailback to hold the linebacker. Gets his shoulders around, delivers the ball right on the outside over the outstretched arms of Hines. First down, out of bounds, stop the clock. First and 10 at the 20-yard line now for Yale. Yale has its best drive of the ball game from their 25-yard line. Now down to the 20 of Penn. First and 10 on the Penn 20. Kelly Ryan, the quarterback. He's dropped back at the 32. Ken Coombs, number 97, made the play with Tom Gilmore helping out. He's definitely having troubles on the drop back. Yale's offensive line can't protect him when he's in the pocket. And that time the outside pressure got to him, both by Coombs and by Gilmore. Both defensive tackles got to him from both sides. Tough situation. Now they're pushed back. Second and lots of yardage looking at this young sophomore, Kelly Ryan. It's second and 20 at the 30-yard line. A 10-yard loss on the last play. Two minutes and 15 seconds remain in this third quarter. Yale with the ball, but Penn leads. 20 to nothing. Second and 20. Screen pass badly thrown. He threw it wide of Moriarty, number 26, the intended receiver. And Kelly Ryan, the sophomore, a little bit unhappy with it and apologizes. That's an experience for you because that time he threw it a little bit too soon. He's got to sit in there a little longer, take a little better drop. But again, he's under a tremendous pressure here to be brought in under these circumstances. And thus far, he's pulled off some big plays, but he's got to pull off a real big one here on third down. It's third and 20 at the 30-yard line of Penn. They'll go for four downs on the series, I quite believe, unless there's a huge loss right here. That's Stewart running out to the right side. And Ryan looks and throws. He's got him. He's got him to five to the three-yard line. Kevin Moriarty to the three, despite the fact that Kelly Ryan was severely rushed on the play. He got rid of that pass to Mike Stewart. And he it's saw first that goal coming. to go at the three. He saw that rush coming, and he still hung in there and made the play. He's on a sprint out action here. As Stewart gets downfield, he sees that rush, and he puts the ball right there for Stewart. The defender again slips. Brad Hunt, excuse me, Dwayne Hewlett to give the break to the deep offensive back. First and goal to go at the three. Man in motion is White. Touchdown! McCauley scores the touchdown. Ted McCauley, the junior from California, scores the touchdown. A 75-yard drive engineered by Kelly Ryan and Yale. The score is 20 to 6. attempt coming up right now for Yale. John Durier will boot it. What? And it's good. 20 to 7. And Yale is back in the ball game with one minute and 35 seconds to go in this third quarter. Naturally the full fourth quarter of play coming up and they trail by 13. Here's the touchdown as the, quarter, as the quarterback just catches the ball back to McCauley and he makes a good cut and gets the blocking on the right side from George Matthews, the right guard, and Steve Squara, and he's in the end zone practically untouched. And Yale gets the score they needed to get back in the game, but let's give credit where it's due. Kelly Ryan, the sophomore, bringing this club back on third and long. 
fourth and long and making the first down. And he's got him back in this ball game. And now it's up to that Yale defense to put the ball, first of all, get them deep in their territory. And finally, for the Yale defense to rise up and stop the running game of Penn. Ryan has now completed six passes of 13 thrown, good for 83 yards. That's Kelly Ryan, just a sophomore, just a kid. For the first time today, the Yale, the Penn defense gets a little rattle. They had Yale in tough situations, but they let him get off the hook, and they know it. There's the boot by Duryea, tough one to handle, but it's being run back smartly. Fumble, loose ball! as he comes up he gets hit the ball bounces on the ground and Jurowitz it was who came up with that football <laughs> Yale ball deep in Penn territory at the Penn 21 22 yard line let's see where they place it down there are the turnovers today four for Penn and that's a cost penalty marker as well oh, a penalty marker A personal foul called against Penn. Penn shows a personal foul. Ball is at the 11-yard line. First and 10 at the 10-11. Jerry Burns seeing this ball game. He had it in complete control for three quarters until the last couple of minutes here. And he knows his ball club's in trouble. His defense is back on the field. They've been on the field most of this last five or six minutes. They're right back here defending 10 yards for another score. Kelly Ryan, the ball, the quarterback. He's moved this ball club. Watch out. He threw it. And he caught it. He caught it. It's good down to the six-yard line. The play is good for five yards. Dave White made the grab. A sliding, diving catch by number 27, Dave White. And a great effort by, here's Ryan again. He's getting tremendous backside pressure, but he gets the ball off with enough on it to his receiver, White, to keep it alive and get the ball inside the 10-yard line. It's second and five at the six. Yale is down, 20 to seven, but they're threatening. Hold everything. Lots of movement, lots of movement in the lines. Well, let's see who did the first movement. Illegal procedure against Yale. What probably happened there was as he came up over the ball, he might have changed the inflection of his cadence or the cadence itself, and he caught his offensive line, and this pushes the ball back. It's second and 10 at the 11-yard line of Penn. Yale is trailing in the ball game by a score of 20 to 7, but they're threatening severely here in the closing moments of the third quarter, 49 seconds to go in the period. Penn knows what he's trying to do. He's sprinting out now, occasionally dropping back. They're trying to get to him. They're trying to put pressure on Ryan, but they're just a little bit short. They won five of the last six ball games last season, and they won most of them in the closing moments of play. Man in motion is Dave White. Kelly Ryan. Almost, almost intended deep downfield for Chuck Dahl, a tight end. And it was just a little bit too long. Dahl, number 80, uh, might have grabbed that deflected pass, but it was just deflected too high by Brad Heinz, the Roverback. Brad Heinz got up just in time as you described it. Dull came in the game. Chuck Dull is a junior from Lamar's, Iowa. He substitutes a tight end with Athanasia. He came in the game on that particular play. Big plays coming up now. It's third and 10 at the Penn 11. Yale ball. Yale trails by 13. Stewart in motion. Ryan rolling. Knocked aside neatly on a fine defensive play by James Feinmeyer. 
Fangmeyer, the safety, coming across and knocking it down. Number 29, Fangmeyer. When you get deep in the opposition's territory around the 10-yard line, you force them to go to man coverage. And that's why the free safety, Fangmeyer, as the ball is thrown by Kelly Ryan, he thought it was there, but Fangmeyer in man coverage was able to come up, tightly play the receiver, and knock the ball away. All right, here's the big play for Yale. It's fourth down, fourth and 10 on the 11. Touchdown! No, he dropped it, he dropped it. He had it and he dropped it. Kevin Moriarty had it for a moment and never had control, and he dropped it. And the defender, that's just what they call a fade pattern. Moriarty just runs for the corner of the end zone, and the quarterback, after a three-step drop, just lays it over his back shoulder. The ball is there. So is Dwayne Hewlett. That looks like a little face guarding to me. He never looked for the football. He got his hand up in his face. The official didn't call it. That's the fade pattern. Hewlett's up in his face and knocks it away as they struggle for the ball. And now Penn has the ball first and 10 on the 11, its own 11 yard line. Hand off to Camisio. He runs for good yard, he's up for about five. It was first and 10 and 11. And now it'll be second and five at about 14. 15 yard line as the third quarter comes to an end. That's the score. Yale battling back here in the second half. We'll be back at this Yale Bowl in just a couple of moments. The Ivy League football game of the week is made possible by... Here's the replay of that last pattern in the end zone intended for the wide receiver Moriarty, defended by Hewlett, the cornerback. You see the defender never looked back for the ball, got his hand up in front of his face and wrestled it away at the end. That could have been called very easily face guarding. It wasn't. Well, now play is going to be resumed. Start of the fourth quarter. Penn leading by a score of 20 to 7. It's second and seven at the 14. And it's the Yale's defensive job to keep Penn bottled back in their own territory so they can threaten once more if they can. Man in motion is Moyer. Krochicki completes it to Moyer. Moyer completes the pass up around the 28-yard line. A pretty play. That's Brian Moyer, national honor student the, as a high school star. Majoring in marketing at the Wharton School. Very good call by the offense. They gambled, went with a bootleg pass, and Kochicki had his receiver wide open. Excellent call by the Penn offense. First and 10 out the 28-yard line. Slot formation on the left side. Camisio. Camisio! He may go all the way! Right down to about the 20-yard line. Rich Camisio. Approaching the 200-yard mark, and Camisio might be... No, he's on his feet. He's just He's winning. okay. But look at this run by Camisio, and this is why he was the sophomore rookie of the year last year. Look at that balance. Cuts to the outside, and now turns it on. And only the speed of Eugene Profit, number 88, could have caught him. Profit, probably the fastest player on the field. Yes, he runs 100 meters in about 10-5. First and 10, the ball is at the 27-yard line of Yale. Flynn carries. Chris Flynn carrying it down to give Camisio the breather. So what balance by Flynn and what a great block on the right side again. We've called his name all day, number 76, Marty Peterson. The big right tackle at 6'5", 255 from Trumbull, Connecticut. Open the hole up. And Flynn flew in there for big yardage. A 45-yard run a moment ago by Camisio. First down now, ball at the 14-yard line. O'Neill carries it, just down to about the 9-yard line. Steve Oleksik, rather. Oleksik at fullback has replaced O'Neill. Oleksik is number 36. And Steve Oleksik carried it inside the 10-yard line to about the 9. It's going to be second and four at the 9-yard line. Hey, this is quite a drive from their own 11, including that 45-yard run by Camisio. Penn has come a long way. Over. Over. 
Trachikia back out to Flynn. Flynn to the five-yard line. Right near the first down marker. It may be a first down. Quickness of Flynn that time. He wanted to really go wide, but as he started wide, the defensive end came up in his face, Osleger, and he has the quickness and the balance to cut the ball back inside, get yardage, particularly in this drive. They want to get some points here. Again, the Penn offense rallying here when they had to, taking their defense off the field and getting a very long and sustained drive. Third and half a yard to go at the five. Third and half a yard to go. Motion once again in the line. Camisio, by the way, now has 183 yards. Illegal procedure against Penn. It's going to be third down and now five and a half yards at the 10-yard line. Moyer comes back into the lineup for Pennsylvania. Penn leads by a score of 20 to 7 against a resurgent Yale team, which suddenly saw its drive slowed considerably by this Yale by the Penn offense as Penn has moved from its own 11 down to the five yard line of Yale and now to the 10 yard line of Yale. 13.02 to go in this football game. Penn threatening third, third down coming up and five and a half to go at the 10 yard line of Yale. Man in motion is Moya. So oh. Chickia is swung by Quinn. Quinn number 16 came smashing in a linebacker slot and he made the tackle back at the 17 yard line. He just splits the block. They're trying to run a little bootleg but Quinn the outside linebacker from Dover Mass number 16 gets penetration gets them for a big loss and now Penn is forced to go for three points but a very important three points at this stage of the ball game. Saunders already has kicked two field goals of 41 and a 33 yards. The boot is up, and it's good, again, from 34 yards out. Three field goals by Saunders. He started the game six for nine for field goals. He has it missed today. Two points after, and now three field goals. He is now nine for 12 in field goals, and he puts Penn out in front substantially by a score of 23 to seven. But you've got to be impressed by the Penn offense, which has really been incredibly good today they've really done the job for themselves running particularly and rich camisio breaking that big run they were with their backs to the wall their defense had been on the field a lot at the end of the third period they just took the ball up the field controlled it came away with some points and now they're in a better position leading in this ball game 23 to 7 with a little over 12 minutes left in the ball game well play play about to be resumed now as Penn will be kicking off once again both teams are at the moment undefeated in Ivy League play, and it's a battle for first place along with Harvard also undefeated going into today's play, and Harvard is playing Princeton. Tom Coe's on the sideline with his uh, offensive coordinator, longtime associate Seb Laspina. I'm sure we're going to see number six back in at quarterback Kelly Ryan, the sophomore who engineered the last score. Kelly Ryan back, but they've got to get a score quickly. They're going to have to put the ball up in the air. They're going to have to throw the ball and get some quick yardage. Ray Saunders boots it, and it's short. Over the side to McCauley. McCauley to the 31-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Yale at the 31. You can't say enough about the special teams. There's some scores coming into the third period. Cornell, Dartmouth coming back in that ball game, leads 10-6. And again, in the third period, a very tight ball game. Harvard and Princeton, 6-3. Harvard leads in the third period. Brown has gone ahead of Holy Cross, 14-13. And Columbia shutting out Bucknell in the fourth quarter. Columbia going for their first victory in over two years. First and 10 at the 31. Slot formation to the right side. Eye formation to the backfield. Ryan rolling out to the right. It fell free among three players. Deep downfield was Kevin Moriarty for Yale, number 82. Well defended against, thrown by Kelly Ryan. One of the secrets today has been the ability of Pennsylvania's defensive back, untested coming into this ball game, to be able to defend against the long pass. They really have not permitted, particularly Kevin Moriarty, to get deep, and that was a perfect indication of it. Two defenders back there against him as Kelly Ryan shows that he can throw the ball deep. He's got a gun. He can throw it short, deep, lots of guts, lots of ability. 
Scotty, that south one. Those two defenders with James Spangmeyer, number 29, and Dwayne Hewlett, number 18, did a good job. Now in second and 10 at the 31. Ryan back once more. Too long. Intended for McCauley on a swing pass out to the right side. He was defended against on the play by Jeff Fortner. And a Yale player is hurt and has a momentary timeout. There are 11 minutes and 49 seconds remaining in this game. And Penn leads Yale 23 to 7. Yale player is down. Looks like one of their offensive linemen. It, it may be Steve Squire, their outstanding right tackle. Sean McDonough. Yes, Marty Glickman. With me, Coach Dan Safieri. Dan, the honorary coach under Jerry Burnt, in charge of motivation. As you can see, he wears his motivational slogans on his own person. If you go into the Penn locker room down at Franklin Field, you see Dan's banners all over the place. Coach, I, I, I see the sticker on your forehead. What does that stand for? It's called Barnaba. It means beat the, beat the pants <laughs> off the Bulldogs. Beat the pants <laughs> off the Bulldogs. And so far, your team has been doing that. Now, I know every season you have a slogan for the entire season. What's the slogan for 1985 for the Penn Quakers? Winning and glory is sufficient for all. <laughs> and keep it alive in 85, which is most important. Keep and it alive in 85. Certainly it seems like that has been the case. Your team's played very well today. Yes, and uh, we hope to keep up the motivation to uh, maybe a word or a, a, an action, and we usually do it in sets of threes. All right, Dan, you're doing a great job. Right. Beat the pants off the Bulldogs. That's the slogan of the day for Penn. Number, number, number 62, Steve Squara, was the man who came walking off the field. His whole family played football, his father and his grandfather. There's Kelly Ryan looking to throw again. There was a receiver downfield and a penalty marker. Roughing the passer. Ryan got hit after he threw that ball. That was a foolish penalty. That was a defensive end or tackle Sebastianelli number 59 who after he had thrown the ball gave him a late hit very poor judgment on his part because Penn is in the controlling situation here they don't want to give Yale an opportunity to get up field and play off a third and long get an opportunity to get a first down but they did it there and Yale gets the ball up field up to the 46 yard line on the 15 yard penalty a personal foul <laughs> Plenty of time still left in this fourth period. If Yale can get a score quickly, they'll be right back in this, and anything can happen. We saw that on a kickoff fumble back to him a few moments ago. And with this Kelly Ryan quarterback, most anything can happen from this Yale ball club. And he falls down. He just fell down, backing up. He was really trying to run a draw play. He was trying to give the ball to Coase, the tailback, and he just fell as he backpedaled as he tried to hand it. He got him the football, but for a loss just happened as he backpedals he's a quarterback that doesn't turn to drop back and he was trying to get the ball there he was and he just about got it to Coase but they come up with a loss anyway it's second down and over 10 11 yards to go it's second and 10 at the 45 yard line only one tailback that's Ryan watch out well, he throws under any circumstances, doesn't he? Let's find out what happened to Squire from Sean McDonald. Steve Squire was kicked in the back of his left calf. He suffered a bit of a muscle bruise, but they say that it's nothing serious. He's on his feet, walking around behind the bench, and could return to action if he wants to. 11 minutes to go in this football game. Yale trails Pennsylvania by a score of 23 to 7. Yale has the ball third and 10 on its own 45. The shadows are just beginning to lengthen on the field. They're almost out to the near sideline from the sun going down behind us. Third and 10 at the 45. The man in motion is Jurowitz. Here's Kelly Ryan again, the sophomore throwing. Incomplete, intended downfield for Kevin Moriarty. No penalty flags. Excellent play by Dwayne Hewlett, the senior from Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. The only experienced returning back in that backfield when the season started. He came up and played the ball perfectly. Hewlett made the hit. The defense for Penn is taking chances. They can afford to. They got a lot of confidence in their coverages. They're putting pressure on the quarterback, forcing here another punting situation. 
Todd Cowan is back number 42 to punt that football. A wobbly kick bounding down at the 20 to the 15 to the 10 yard line to the 9 8 <laughs> and down to the 7 yard line. Good kick. Good kick and you could hear the pen bench yelling let it go get away from it don't cough it up let it roll dead we'll take it down there we'll try and get the football run the ball a little bit now eat up some of the clock we're ahead by 23 7 as we look at some more scores from around the country North Carolina shutting out Florida State in the third period that's a big upset in the brewing that's an interesting score double zero double zero Oklahoma Arkansas leading Houston, Alabama leading Memphis State. It's first and ten at the seven-yard line. Penn with the ball, eye formation in the backfield, slot to the left side. The fullback carries Steve Oleksik going up to about the eight, nine-yard line. Steve Oleksik, the big back at 6'1", 236 pounds from Severna Park, Maryland. He's a mechanical engineer. He's a situation player. They usually use him in the goal line, but now they can afford to bring him in here as a blocker and also as a runner and there's Notre Dame in the second period shutting out Southern Cal 14 zip Southern Cal won the Rose Bowl a year ago there's Army beating Kogi second and eight at the nine yard line quarterback put Chickia handing up tailback Camisio carrying what a pretty run up to the 20 yard line 11 yards more he's up close to the 200 yard mark you know, there's a, Comizio. there's a feeling about Pennsylvania by some teams in the Ivy League that when you get them off the artificial surface, they're a different ball club. They haven't been a different ball club today, and Rich Comizio has been cutting and doing a great job. This is the offensive line coach at Yale describing some blocking patterns. If we get any pressure back, then we're going to have problems here. Now, how about on the draw? We had a 50 look. You're taking him right. Was a draw right? Yeah. Okay, draw left. So we're getting a co op right here. Now, do we have him? Yeah, okay, make sure. How about our tackles? You get to the backers? All right, super. Make sure we get that. And then we got to get some ball. We got to run that play. It should open up if they keep playing us in a 50 look on a play, right? So bear down, move the feet, set the plays up for us. But you really got to sell it. I got to give him time. Because he's got to hit that ball. What he's saying in so many words is his offensive line has been having its problems protecting for the quarterback Kelly Ryan because they really are dropping back and it's tough to do that when the defense knows you're doing it coming after you but basically he's trying to get them to do a better job to maybe make a draw play or a running play go once in a while that's the number 60 the center Steve Bonato the senior from Cardinal O'Hara High School in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania was down for a while. He's 5'11", 225, played a lot of football in Pennsylvania. He's going to go off, but he looks like he's okay. Just take a breather. Steve Bonato. And Paul Smith, number 53, replaces him. Smith, the junior out of Philadelphia, an economics major at the Wharton School in Pennsylvania. Rich Camisio has 195 yards thus far today for Pennsylvania. 195. Flynn is in there now at tailback. For Chickie and Cat, throwing it. Scungio has it. And they have Scungio, but not until he's gone into Yale territory to the Yale 47-yard line. You might ask why they did that. They did it because Yale is figuring they want to eat out the clock. They're playing their linebackers up tighter. They give a little bootleg action. Everybody gets tied up with the fake, and Scungio just comes out clean. It's just like playing catch in the park. He gets in the ball, gets up field, excellent yardage, stays in bounds. Another first down. 46 yards on that play, and it's first from 10 at the 46 yard. 34 yards, I'm sorry, 34 yards on that play. And Splint tipping down and goes inside the 45 to about the 44 yard line. It's second and eight at the 44. Second quarter, Navy leading Pittsburgh, 14 to 7. And Syracuse comfortably ahead of Temple, 29 to 6. That's a big score for Syracuse. Temple's a good football team. That's a big. They can win that one. It'll be a big one for Dick McPherson and the Syracuse Orangemen. Second and eight at the 44. Ten against Yale. Flynn carries. He's thrown for a loss. Back at the 46-yard line. It'll be third and ten at the 46-yard line. Excellent play by the outside linebacker Derek Kay, the junior number 95. Forced that play outside, and once he was stripped of his blockers, 
Flynn really didn't have anywhere to go. That was a good job defensively by Yale. Jim Crochichia, C-R-O-C-I-C-C-H-I-A, Crochichia. Crochichia out of Southbury, Connecticut, brings his ball club to the line of scrimmage. He's number seven, and now they call for a timeout. There are eight minutes and nine seconds left to go in this football game, and Pennsylvania leads Yale 23 to seven. When players resume, it'll be third and 10 at the Yale 47-yard line. There was some concern about there was some concern about Krachikia coming into this game. We'll talk about that in a minute. We'd like to thank Mr. A. Bond, the Giamatti, the president of Yale University, Frank Ryan, the athletic director, for all their efforts in making this broadcast possible. We'd also like to thank Mr. Shelton Hackney, the president of the University of Pennsylvania, Paul Rippencam, the athletic director, and Herb Hartnett, sports information director, for their generous assistance during the course of this game. All of us on the Ivy League Network would like to add a special thanks to these fine underwriters, too, who make these Ivy telecasts possible. Jim Crochicchia coming into this game, they were expecting great things from him coming into this season. He's a big kid at 6'3", about 207 pounds. He's only a junior. He's got a strong arm. But their offense really hadn't clicked. And they were concerned because they felt maybe he hadn't grasped it as quickly as they had hoped he would. But today he has. He has executed well, he's handed off well, and he's thrown the ball under pressure. I think this by far has been his best day as a Penn football player and as Penn quarterback. Well, it's now third and 10 at the 47-yard line. Signals being called by Krochikia. Incomplete pass. His arm moved forward. He was hit down high and hard by Ardell McKenna. And as you said, you've called McKenna's name quite frequently today, Bob. McKenna has been the guy who's been making most of the plays for him. He got up in Kerchikia's face. That time, the defensive secondary for Yale had the receivers well covered. He had to wait a little longer. McKenna got to him, and now they're going to force a punting situation. Fourth and 11. Fourth and 11 at the... Uh, 47. Here's the punt. A low spinning punt. McCauley lets it roll, roll, roll inside the 10 and touchdown at about the 7 8 yard line. So Yale has a long way to go once again, and much of this ball game, they've been deep in their own territory. That aggressive hand defense keeping them there. With that score, 23 to 7, there are now 7 minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the ball game, and Yale must score on this series to get back in this game. And again, they're going with a sophomore, Kelly Ryan, at quarterback. Very interesting. They're bringing him back into the ball game. He's been under a lot of pressure. Penn's been coming after him with the rush, both especially on the backside. But he stayed in there, and he's made some big plays thus far. And Yale has put Steve Squara back in the lineup once again. That's good news for Steve and the ball club. He's okay. First and ten it is. The ball at the nine-yard line where it was placed down. Near the goal line, Ryan throwing. He's got it. Moriarty grabs it at the 45-yard line. First and ten at the 45-yard line. That's the long pass from the nine. And the problem here is not with the cornerback, Hewlett. He's got his man in the inside, Moriarty. It's the free safety that's got to get deeper. Fangmeyer comes in too late. See him from the left side, 29. He should be there to make the play. 35 yards on that last pass play. First and 10 at the 44. There's Ryan again. Watch out. Down he goes as Brad Heinz, the catcher on the baseball team, caught the would-be thrower. Brad Heinz is a rover. He's a defender. He can come up on the line. That time he blitzed from the outside, came clean, and made the play. A seven-yard loss on the play makes it second, and 17 at the 37. No huddle. Pulled down again is Kelly Ryan. That Penn defense is just tough to handle. Well, they know he's going to pass, and they're just coming after him. And that time it was Fortner, the other outside linebacker. They brought both the outside linebacker, Fortner, and the rover. They ran out of people to block him. He just came in clean. A six-yard loss on the play, so it's third and 23. And on this series, so important to Yale, they're moving back after that opening pass, that fine completion to Kevin Moriarty. Third and 23. You can see that Penn defense loosening up a bit now. Incomplete. 
Double teamed on the far side. Dwayne Hewlett was there. Jim Fangmeyer was there as well. And that time, Fangmeyer got over and made the coverage. He came from free safety and played the football. Excellent play. Mike Stewart was the intended receiver, but he was thoroughly covered. There's the quarterback spraying to his left, Ryan. He's trying to put the ball up to Moriarty Stewart. As he throws the ball, he is hit late. The official let it go, but he's been under the gun ever since he's coming to the game because Penn knows he's going to throw the ball. Todd Cowan booting the ball, an end-over-end -end kick. Fair catch. No, it was no fair catch. Very dangerous, very dangerous by the rookie there, Chris Flynn. Chris Flynn loves to run with that football. He should have called for a fair catch. They were waiting for the ball to come down. They had to give him a chance to catch it, but they didn't have to wait very long after he caught it. Ball is at the 34-yard line of Pennsylvania, and it's first and 10 for Penn at their 34. They lead in the ball game now 23 to 7. Six minutes and eight seconds to go on this football game. High formation in the backfield. Man in motion going over to the right side is Novoselsky. And Joe Lorano, reserve fullback, carries the ball. He's just a sophomore, number 41. Joe Lorano, out of Revere, Massachusetts, carried it. And apparently Jerry Brent is giving some of his second and third string as an opportunity to play in this ball game with 23 to 7 lead Penn can afford to do that and only five minutes and 40 seconds to go in the game it's second and six at the 39 a loss on the play that was Camizio he just tossed it back to him but there's a lot of uh, delay in it I think it was a poor snap he finally tossed him the ball by the time he got it Big Ardell McKenna was there to make the play for a loss. One of the few times he's lost yardage today. So it'll be third and five as he lost one yard on that last play. Ball at the 38-yard line. Camisio staying in. He was just, uh, he, he is now six yards shy of 200 yards for the day. Third and five. Camisio with it. He picks up a couple of yards. Okay? Maybe three on the play to the 41-yard line. Fourth and four at the 41. We'll get some Ivy League scores now, see how the rest of the league is doing. Dartmouth leading Cornell now, 17 to 10. Cornell led earlier. Both those teams looking for their first win. And Harvard, 6-3 over Princeton. Harvard undefeated in Ivy League competition thus far this year. Holy Cross now leading Brown, 20 to 17. Hunt formation for... Dave Fasnack booting the ball, end over end kick. McCauley has it. Good run back, picked up 10 yards. From the 28 yard line to the 38 yard line on the run back. So it's first and 10 at the 38. Now four minutes and 11 seconds to go in the ball game. Looking back at this game and thinking about what perhaps has happened, I, you'd have to reflect and say Yale came into this game. Columbia behind now 13 10, leading 10 0 at first, but now they're behind 13 10 at Bucknell. But Yale's inability to get their running game going with tremendous pressure on Carm Cozen and his staff to throw the ball a lot. And Penn has risen to the occasion and has defended against the pass very well. That's been the big talk. Now Mike Curtin concerned. is back in at, full, at quarterback. Curtin passing and it's intercepted. Here's Penn with the ball. Denton Walker has it and he's rolled out of bounds at the near side. Denton Walker number 52 out of Walker. Columbus, Georgia. Denton Walker and Carmen Cozer doesn't look pleased at Denton Walker's interception. Well, we talked about the linebackers right from the beginning and they're four outstanding athletes. O'Connor, Chismar, Walker, and Fortner. And you've called those names over and over again. As we watch Curtin, he's just a half sprint here. He's looking to drop the ball inside to his tight end. But look at the play. The linebacker just flows. Walker, 6'2", 217 pounds, and he's able to run and jump like that. He's a real athlete. Four minutes left to go in the ball game. Pennsylvania leads 23 to 7. Camisio carries. He picks up three yards more. He should be very, very close to that 200-yard mark right now. What total do you have? 200? He does have 200 yards. According to our unofficial totals, Camisio has run for 200 yards this ball game. I used to run for 200 yards in a season. 
<laughs> a great day for Rich Comizio coming it's home to Connecticut. Second and seven, all at the 35 of Yale. Comizio again. Right down to the 31-yard line. Picks up four yards more. It'll be third and three at the 31-yard line. Very, very big win. If Penn goes on here, and it looks like they're commanding the situation. Big win at midseason for them to beat the team most people thought could win this title, Yale. Very impressive for them to come up here where they haven't had great success over the years in the Yale Bowl and really dominate play most of the way this it's, afternoon. It's third and three at the 31. I formation of the backfield. And the man in motion going to the right side is Novoselsky. Right down to the 15-yard line, Eric Rutherford carries it. Rutherford out of Philadelphia. And he can honest me for number 88. Rutherford is making this ball game late in the season. He's a senior. That was a little split screen to the split end. Motion the tight end out there. Fake inside and then throw the ball out on a screen and use the tight end as a blocker coming from the inside out. And Rutherford with his quickness got the yardage. He picked up 15 yards and the first down, so it's first and 10 at the 16-yard line. Slot formation on the left side. I formation in the backfield. Lorano in front of Camisio. He spins forward upfield. That was not Timizio carrying that time, however. That was number 42, Bruni. Bruni. We'll dig up some information on him. He picked up six yards, makes it second and four at the 10 yard, at the 11 yard line. Make it second and five at the 11 yard line. Jim Kochikia calling signals. Right down to the six yard line. Lorano carried them. Officials call for a momentary time. 148 left to go in this ball game. There's no question about who the winner was going to be. Penn Lee leads now 23 to 7 with just 148 to go. We have to go off the air at 4 o'clock, but that's about six minutes away. Look at this score. A safety was scored by Princeton. Well, it was 6-3, and now it's 6-5 getting back to this ball game for a minute in that tailback now is Jim Bruni a sophomore tailback from Audubon Pennsylvania and at fullback is Joe Lorano a sophomore so Jerry Burns got two sophomores in the lineup getting a look at him here under pressure and giving a rest to Rich Camisio who's had a tremendous day at tailback it's second and nine now at the 15 yard line 135 to go in the ball game Penn leading 23 to 7. Whole flock of strangers in the lineup right now. Up to the middle for no gain is Steve Oleksik. The reserve fullback, Oleksik carried it, number 36. No gain makes it third and nine at the 15, and the clock is running. 113 remains in the game, and it's running. And a whole host of substitutions coming on the field. Jim Crochikia is going out. And he's being replaced by Scott Marcotte at quarterback, a junior 5'11 for 180 pounds from Toledo, Ohio. G Jim Crochikia has had his best day of the season today here, home in Connecticut. Third and nine at the 15-yard line. Swing back in motion. Here's the quarterback, Marcotte. He's getting experience. 35 seconds to go on the clock continues to run nobody is looking to stop it that could have been the last play of the ball game Penn is leading 23 to 7 we're inside the 25 second mark now and they don't have to run another play and the tackle on that last play was made by the Yale captain Carmen Alacqua who's playing right out this ball game he hasn't let up a minute he hasn't been called much today because I think the offensive line of Penn has done a good job but he chased down the quarterback and made a big hit Carmen Coza knows this is a tough loss, but there's a lot of big games left in the season for Jerry Burt there to come in and win so decisively. What a big game. 23-7, the final score. And so they congratulate each other on the field. We'll be back at the Yale Bowl in just a moment. The and there you see the traditional shaking of hands on the field. Yale in its blue jerseys, Pennsylvania wearing white today. 
They shake each other's hand as they move downfield. Some mighty happy and some mighty unhappy, of course. Final score of the ball game. Penn continues undefeated in Ivy League play. Their record in Ivy League competition this year is now four wins and, new, and no losses. And the Yale record, their first loss in Ivy League competition, is two and one. Automotive products for Ivy League telecasts furnished by Chrysler Plymouth Division, Chrysler Corporation. Produced in cooperation with WNET 13, copyright 1985. The Council of Ivy Group Presidents, all rights reserved. This has been a presentation of Transworld International and the Ivy League Network. And the Ivy League Network.